stores carry it. 975dip.com. Get out of that dip and dip correct. 975dip.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right. Welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Our final segment before News of the Weird. I'm watching Vince Young get dropped in a fight. Did you see that? Yeah, I had a listener, I guess, tweeted both of us about yeah. it. Yeah. Vince, apparently back on, Feb- in, on February 4th. Yep. Yeah. February 4th, he's in a bar. There's all kinds of pushing and shoving going on. I don't know what guys said to him or what. Some drinks were thrown. Vince is standing between there. Some guys that are going at it behind Vince, one of his boys with one of the other guys. And this guy just pops Vince right in the chin. So how? But I guess it wasn't it, even. It was It was a sucker. It was a sucker punt. Well, he was right in front of him, so it but wasn't for like I he guess, didn't see but it. are you expecting? No, if you weren't expecting that, it's a sucker punch. So... I guess a national title only gets you so far when drinking is involved because wouldn't you would think it could Vince have been would Aggies ne- or Sooners <laughs> possibly you would just think Vince would never get punched in Texas. Yep, it's in a Texas bar. You would think unless they're unless, like you said, they, they might not be Texas fans. Now they may be Texas fans if Vince didn't did, sign something or whatever, maybe. whatever, the, whatever caused the scuffle. Vince got pissed off at one point early on. He pushed the whole group of them back. And then, and then, yeah, some dude said something to him that Vince just didn't like, and then, then, then it started. Yeah, d- this is Vince right here. And yeah, you see, Vince him. Young, you see, yeah, him he get gets hit. dropped in this one. Uh, it's a, it was February fourth in a bar. I see a drunk, a drink was thrown, and here, and and one of his boys is up against it. They they move it to over here. Yeah, I just saw the punch where Vince yeah. gets dropped. He's not really oh, here pa- he is. he's not really paying attention to the guy. The no. guy the guy punches him, walks away, and takes off his shirt. <laughs> yeah, he punches him. Yeah, and he's walk as he's walking out of the bar. He boom, and Vince goes down, and he takes off his shirt. He looks like hey, he's some kind of a fighter. Yeah. You got to watch now in bars. Yeah, man. you never know. You never know. That guy I- is probably eight <laughs> inches shorter than Vince. But yeah, hit him square and flush, and Vince went down. The guy. Just walked away and took off his shirt. <clears throat> yeah, for whatever reason, you got to take your shirt off. After I don't that know happens. why. After that happens, you need to take your shirt off. Well, uh, it's a, it's the universal sign of impending danger. Like I just dropped this guy, and now I'm taking off my shirt, and I'm ready for everyone else. And then everyone else kind of backs away. 
He's right. not a small. I mean, the guy looks like he's kind of no. Built, he's built. built yeah, he's, yeah, he looks like he's he's bowed up a little bit. Okay, so today, Cal becomes the owner officially becomes the owner of the Houston Texans, right? When the vote goes through, which is yeah. it is expected. It to is go expected. Through. Jerry Jones had some. I that. I don't know. I don't know. Jerry's like, yeah, absolutely. Cal should own. I think it's a ploy by Jerry just to get Cal to own it. If you want to know the truth, <laughs> like when, like when an owner told Bob that the yeah. Texans were close. Yeah, they got to get the pull the card out of the ditch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job. Keep keep doing what you're doing. Ah, that's terrible. Um. What? Oh, we didn't even talk about Caitlin Clark last night. Yeah. She wasn't very good. Her team overall didn't play very no, well. No, they no. were not good. And I'll tell you, the West Virginia people are none too thrilled. I got a text from my boys at what West are, Virginia. What are they upset about? Oh, the fouls called on oh, them. Okay. Okay. And it was it certainly wasn't equitable. Um, and, and, and Caitlin, ESPN had to have Caitlin move on. Period. Is that was but that you, their thought? You, no. you think that's what's supposed to happen, though? You said they should game the system for her to get to the final yeah, four. Yeah, wait, you actually yeah. said that. I said, and I'm right, and they did. I'm yeah. not okay with it. I'm okay. all right with it. Then why, why are we bringing okay the complaints to your buddies? Did you? Well, oh, my them? buddies are. I said, hey, what they got? Sorry, you're living in a Caitlin world. Okay, <laughs> nothing you can do about it. You, sorry, you got that draw. That's on. That's not on you. Tell the committee because guess what was going to happen? Caitlin was moving on. Period. And she did. Uh, but, man, she got off one one shot. <laughs> she is something. Um, she it's a, on the wing at a, an NBA three-point line. Catch and one motion just throws it up and knocks it down. She is really something. Uh, sorry, West Virginia. You just got in the way. Oh, just for a little bit. Um, what else has happened? Oh, we got swivel tackles, swivel hip tap- tackles out, beat it. All right. And we've got a new kickoff in the NFL. Nice. I love it. What happened to the game I love? Oh, it's, it's PlayStation. Yeah, can, yeah, can, it's PlayStation. This is the same, sure, the my, same thing where they eliminated okay. stuff after a year. Uh, DJ LeMahieu won't be here starting the season. That's good news for our Astros. No uh, Garrett Cole. Okay. No DJ LeMahieu. Astro sweep. And, by the way, that's Thursday at 3 o'clock, uh, opening of the season. Friday, Apple TV game. Thank you very much. Nice. Yes, I love that. And the Rockets win and are a half game behind Golden State. Golden State plays at Miami tonight. Don't mess this up, Dell. Mess what up? This run that we're on where we're going to be uh, tied unless unless Miami win, tanks tonight. Just win your games. Okay. You get to play Jimmy Golden Butler State. Jimmy Butler might have bets on himself. <laughs> He's got too many Michelob commercials to do for that. Um, plenty of a big revenue stream for Jimmy. You got Golden State coming to town. What are you worried about what they're doing? Just win your games. Keep Just win the next eight in a row, and you'll be fine. Oh, yeah. That's win a, okay. win 17 in a row. You'll be fine. You think they're going to win 17 they in a row? They won nine. Keep winning. They got a tough stretch here. They got to add Oklahoma City so you, next. So you want Miami to play well tonight, but when they come to town, play poorly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. I'm sorry. I want what I want. Just win your 17 games in a row, and you'll have to worry about tonight. Well, that's true. That is true. This be- new kickoff is going to be cool. I'm watching some of the stuff. Mm. It- <laughs> I like new kickoffs. I don't like the clownish stuff. I don't think what it's What clownish stuff? It's Change just the rules. Days. Just make it 30-yard line. Yeah, that's they it. when they move when they move the extra point, people thought that say, was clownish, no too. Free, you are not allowed to. Well, you're not allowed to fair catch, but. If it lands in the end zone, it doesn't matter anyway. So, no fair catches. Of course, there's no fair catch. But if it lands at the one and then bounces that way, if there's a little reverse, it goes out to the junk on it. No, no, no. Yes, if yes. it lands at the one, you're yeah. inside the landing zone. No, but it goes the other way. What do you mean? You have to recover it then. If it lands at the one yard line and has a little reverse spin on Back it, you got to go recover it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they still like can't you move. Do have you to right it's now. The, it's not the like you have to line. right now. If it bounces it inside at the one yard line, it goes into the end zone. It where do you get it? Twenty. No. Yes. That's if it bounces inside the twenty yard line. If it lands inside the twenty, it goes to the twenty. See, you're already confused. No, I'm not. You go? said if it lands on the one, it goes in the end zone. What's your question? That's out to the twenty, what, Lance. What's your question? It's I, thought, out to the I 20. thought if it landed in front of the twenty. No, that's the forty. 
You're confused, not us. You're the one that's confused. That's, right. that's the 40. Yeah. Okay. That's right. If it lands in front of the 20, it goes to the 40. If it mm-hmm. lands at the 1, it goes to the end zone. It's, it's out to the 20. It's the 20. It's and not that the, hard. Where's the 35? If 35 it goes lands in there on the, the fly. Zone. Okay. If it lands in the end zone. So it lands in the end zone, it's 35. And then at the 1, it's 20. At the 21, it's 40. And then, do you get a 50? Is there, like, can no. you call? No. Well, you know how it's in not Rock that and hard, Jock. Lance. It's really not wait, that wait, difficult. Wait, wait, in Rock and Jock. Where We've already race, got it. You're the only you're one the only who's one having I'm issue. I'm asking because I don't know if all the rules are out. In Rock and Jock, where they raise the goals at the end of the game, can you get, like, is there a five-pointer? Like, are you able to get any points on the kickoff wait for the kickoff they, teams? Wait till they adopt the XFL extra point. Is there trash From the cans? two, <laughs> the five, and the ten. <laughs> You got one now point, talking. two points, and three That's points. That's the kind of a carnival ass games that got that league kicked out. No sports. Again, it was Roger Goodell and COVID that did that. Nope. Yep. To get rid of the XFL, it was bad offensive lines. Roger Goodell may have had a deal with China. No, he did not. We don't know. He did. You, you don't do know. know. He did not have any. To get rid of the XFL, every football league crashes and burns. All right. It's like they're over. Okay. Any league trying to like have a business oh. model is over. You watch our Hopefully UFL this one now. Works. Hopefully this one works. Now that you've come, now that you've put some so wrestling. So you've turned in it. on the X, the UFL slash XFL slash USFL because why is it only wrestlers? Because why the don't NF- only wrestlers because want to the do NFL football adopted one of the rules. No, no, no. You've turned first on them. It's, first we have well, first we have Donald Trump who's been in wrestling. Then we have Vince McMahon wrestling. Then we have Vince McMahon again wrestling. Then we have The Rock wrestling. Why is wrestling? Why are why is the wrestling community trying to get involved well, the in new, football? Well, the new the new people who brought the USFL back weren't wrestlers. No, but they collapsed. No, they merged. Oh, I'm thinking of the A A F L. Yes, that's what you're thinking of. Which I'm thinking of one of the other failed leagues. So, so you, the USFL came back. They didn't do so anything. Let me, let so let me get this straight. You're merged. taking a victory lap because other leagues have failed all the while. You're criticizing your league for adopting one of their rules? Yeah. Is that what you're doing I've right now? I've seen their jinx. Their whole thing is jinx. <laughs> Stop We're dabbing. breaking here. I want to talk right now about free rain coffee. That's my favorite coffee. Free rain coffee. It is. Oh, I'm telling you. I really, really, really like free rain coffee. You will like free rain coffee as well. Free rain coffee has been around for 25 years. Free rain coffee is Texas. Free rain coffee is America. Free rain coffee is get up and get after it. It's you you dream coffee work repeat. Dream coffee work repeat. Okay, this is what we do. Proud to serve America. Country, community, military, veterans, first responders, nurses, teachers. They believe in this stuff. They really do it. Free rank coffee. You will believe in it too after you drink this full bodied, wonderful coffee. I, I love the Texas pecan. You can love whatever you love. Okay. Lance, you've tried it. He's, he's, it he's tried awesome. it. It really is good. Free rank coffee. You can find it all at 975coffee.com. Put in promo code ESPN20 for 20% off site-wide, whatever it is that you want. They have the Keurig pods. They have, you can you get the beans or you can ground it, whatever you want. It. 975coffee.com, ESPN20 is the promo code.
All right, here we go. Apparently, in St. Louis County, a SWAT team raided an innocent family over stolen AirPods that were dropped on their street. What so, now? first of all, why is a SWAT team, why are they going after stolen AirPods? Something tells me you got to read deeper into the story. I bet they're after the person whose AirPods were and they were tracking it. Um, apparently, Brittany, Sh- and it was at home with their children, when police using a battering ram busted through front door, okay, the SWAT team was looking for guns and other material related to a carjacking that had occurred that morning. Their search didn't turn up any of that, though it led to, apparently, the AirPods were ditched on the street in front of their house. Yeah, that's what I figured. Whoever was the bad guy, they ditched <sighs> that, and they thought, this must be it. No, they threw it out the window, dummy. You ever seen, like, why would a SWAT team do that instead of just... Yeah. Maybe it's right here. The Maybe AirPods knock are on here. the door. No one's ever thrown a phone Why at did us? you pick that house, too? I know. It's well, right here. Maybe they just dropped it like, uh, well, we might want to knock on this one. I'm not sure we want to go full battering ram. Meanwhile, they, they drove there wherever they are. Minnesota State Senator Warren Limmer made news. Apparently, Minnesota wants to have a safe gun storage law where you have to keep your your firearm in a safe place, stored in a safe place where, let's say, kids couldn't get to it. But Warren Limmer opposes it. He says rural folks can't have that because you even walk too close to a cow and it'll take you down and trample, trample you into dust. So their guns have to be readily available so they can shoot that cow in case you walk too close to it. So not, don't get too close to a cow. Don't get too close to it. No. We need, I need to carry my gun around. Well, there's certain, boy, In case I got to shoot a cow. There's certain, yeah. I mean, Have you ever, grandma, have you ever ca- shot a, car, a cow? I've never shot a cow. I have my, my, my uncle's. And my mom and my grandma and grandpa, they had a, a feedlot that they, out in Kansas. I've never heard of them shooting a cow or getting trampled. You usually, you know, you also have those little, you can also shock them yeah. if you need, if they get too close. But what's better is having a gun to shoot them. Well, what about a nail gun like in uh, No Country for Old Men? Yeah, that's, uh, I've never seen that other than that, <laughs> that air gun. That's just the air gun, just the air pressure alone. Throw a nail in it and forget about it. Oh, no, you're done. Well, you could forget about it anyway. There Why was, do more people not have these things? I know, right? There was, in West Shore, there was a sign that read, Report Impaired Drivers. It's no longer there. Can you guess why? Hit by an impaired driver. <laughs> Am I right? Exactly. How How ironic. Viagra is linked to 50% reduction of Alzheimer's risks in a new study. Are you going to start taking Viagra every day, Dell? Why? I don't forget things. What? Oh, what's your name? I said, okay, John. I'm going to have to start taking is Viagra that why, every is day. Is that why Gilbert was so... I don't know. He couldn't remember anything? <laughs> he does doesn't he remember need, the schedule. Does he need to take something? He might need some Viagra. Can you imagine him on Viagra? 50% reduction. <laughs> No, I, I, I think absolutely. Not. I'm not sure Gilbert needs it, I but think charged, as much as he thinks about he's stuff, he's charged up enough. He really is. Gilbert don't need that stuff. He don't. So in prison, a man was taught printing. He was taught the printing trade. Okay. When he got out, he started printing false notes, bills, yeah, money. Yeah. He started printing. He went to I, he went to university as they call it. Yeah, he went to university, learned how to uh, PhD trade, in counterfeiting, yeah, learned to trade. Learned to trade. He's a PhD in counterfeiting. Yeah, now he's a counterfeiter. Well, not if he got caught. Congratulations. Not true. if he got caught, he wasn't a That's PhD. True. Why can't we use our our knowledge for good and not evil? I just don't get it. It's not good making yourself more money. It is good. Yeah, it's you just, didn't have it's a problem also with you're it. back in prison to you learn didn't have another a problem trade. With it when they were doing it in Warrior. 
you you just learned another trade. You're gonna you get to learn another trade now. You get to go back to to trade school. I know. Prison he goes back to trade school. Uh, apparently, Logan Webb has made the news. Their Mariners pitcher. Um, I'm asked if he'd ever been to Idaho. If you had to eliminate one state, which one would you choose? And he said, Idaho. He said, I've heard it's not real to begin with because think about it. Have you ever met? Oh, excuse me. It's Wyoming. Have you ever met someone from Wyoming? Have you ever met someone from Wyoming? Met them? Yes. I feel like I have. I don't. I don't. I don't have you, I Del? Do. I've never have either. I don't run never. Those circles. So he, Logan says, nobody has. I don't think it's real. Have, I've never met anyone from Wyoming. I've driven through Wyoming. I mean, I see it's it real. I seen it on TV on Yellowstone. Yeah, but isn't that? Are where you, you sure dump it's people not off? just some kind of? They just put a name on it. And it's not real. So you don't think I can drive up to Wyoming? Well, you've driven through. I Wyoming. have driven through Wyoming. Yeah. Did you see people there? No. Or but people just driving through it. People are driving through it. I didn't so, actually see. Does people. no one actually live in Wyoming? No, well, no one. Now that I now that I think about it, I only saw people driving through it. Um, it's pretty. I didn't see. Is that you where Yellowstone is? I believe so. It was yeah. in Montana, or is it? It's Montana. Yellowstone is Montana. Montana. Wyoming Wyoming's where you jump people. Same off thing. And, yeah. The I always station, think no, 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 no. Isn't the Wyoming Dakotas. where they, Don't they cross over and throw the dead body in the Wyoming? train station? In the is train it, station it, in Wyoming. In Wyoming. Yeah. See, it might not be real. It's just yeah. a place to dump bodies. Native Americans are like. He might be right about hey, this. Native, we America, were doing fine Native Americans are like, oh, yeah, people lived here. Yeah, it used to be here. Yeah. To you guys showed used up. Used to. Not anymore. It's not real anymore. Oh, really? Tell it to Josh Allen. Uh, Yeah. Is he from. Oh, he went to school there. Yeah. Tell Josh Allen it's not real. Well, Logan Webb, you tell him. Yeah. Hey, he might be onto something here. I don't know. <laughs> you don't? I don't know. I don't know. And where does he? where is he a reliever for? The Mariners. Exactly. Yeah. Idiots. They're not winning the division. <laughs> no. But he does like the new kickoff. That's for sure. And and Josh Allen only played in Wyoming. He's not from there. So yeah, we're, not even sh- we're not even sure that he was actually in the state when he was playing. Do you think they blindfold him and bring him into cool the university where they don't actually see where they're going? How else do you recruit to that, recruit to that and place? And it's really they're just playing in, he was, in Montana? He was playing in Fresno. No one knows. Or they're playing in Colorado somewhere, Something. but they don't know. Yeah, no one knows. We're done. Mopey and Mapes next, right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome into the show. I mean, it feels like we start every show after a Rockets game repeating a consistent theme. They win and they dominate. This one was a little different. If you didn't, if you didn't see the game, the Rockets struggled in the first half against the Portland Trailblazers B team. You might say, Dell, that's a little insulting. No, it isn't. No Anthony Simons, no Jeremy Grant, no, no air mattress, DeAndre Ayton. And I know it was a B team because it was like a spring training game because there was a guy with the number 72 starting. When you see the number 72 in any sporting event, you know, generally, that guy isn't a starter. I mean, with, with the Astros wrapping up spring training, it's, well, not even spring training, they're in town playing the their their affiliate, the Space Cowboys, and lost to them 3-1. to one. But that's on my mind. Spring training baseball and guys who play on the B field or come in and play because your your lineup isn't going to be out there. And the and the and the Portland Trailblazers had the guy with the number 72 starting. I don't know how you picked that number. We know Luca has 77 and he's the one guy I will accept losing to who wears a number in the 70s. Jalen Green is kind of right now the bell cow if I'm using a football term for the Rockets. He struggled in the first half and they that means they struggled. Uh, we know the offense kind of runs through him at this point and he was he was bad in the first half. It it was very February Jalen Green. And the Rockets looked like the February version of themselves until he decided to to remember remember this is March Jalen Green. I'm playing for other things. Hey, they got number 72 out there. Yeah, what am I doing? What am I, why are we losing to number 72? We're not this is not going to happen. We're not going to in the losing streak in the winning streak by losing to a to a Portland lineup that featured a guy wearing 72 and other players no one has ever heard of because, as I said, it's a Trailblazers B team. They got it together. Jalen Green got it together. And the Rockets have now won nine in a row. And that means they have the longest streak in the NBA winning streak because the, the Boston Celtics lost. They had a 30-point lead against the Atlanta Hawks and lost on the road in Atlanta. And did you see how unserious the Hawks are? The Hawks are one Take the lead in the fourth quarter. They're leading. They miss a jump shot. I think maybe DeJounte, DeJounte Murray misses a jumper, a mid-range jumper, and the Hawks get a rebound. There's no – the shot clock is turned off now. They don't have to shoot – they don't have to shoot the ball again. They can get fouled and go to the free throw line and try to salt this game away. Instead, when the ball's kicked out to DeAndre Hunter, he takes a three with about nine seconds left on the game clock. Shot clock turned off. He makes it. The Hawks go up four. They go on to win the game. But, you know, because it's a three-pointer at the end of a game, very well could have missed. I know he was wide open. That's a shot you don't take. He took it. He made it. The Hawks go on to win the game. And the the Celtics now have the questions they always answer. They always lose games this way. For as good as they've been, they always happen to lose a game. The games they lose are always this way, where, they, where their offense kind of shuts down and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown turning turn into guys who – forget that the offense doesn't have to run through them. And by run through them, I mean simply dribble the clock out and the defense falters. But but the Celtics have – we're nitpicking at them because they have the best record in basketball and are playing like at a historic level when it comes to rating. But because of that loss, the Rockets have the longest winning streak in basketball and they are half a game behind the Warriors. The Warriors go to Miami tonight. Miami trying to stay out of the plan, so it's, it's an important game for them. So – by the end of tonight, Sean, by the time we come in tomorrow, the Rockets could be tied for the final playing spot. Yes, they could They could be tied. Um, the Warriors do have the tiebreaker, so being tied. Well, A, being tied on uh, March 27th doesn't do a lot period but yeah, b being true. being tied on march 27th when you don't have the tiebreaker uh does even less i would say it, it'll make people feel good it'll make people feel good it'll it'll be a nice uh you know where everyone can screenshot the uh the standings uh but yeah ultimately they're gonna have to they're gonna have to still do more obviously that game um Against the Warriors on April fourth is going to be a big one, and their uh, the Rockets schedule is going to um, toughen up here coming up. Uh, well, a coming up with the Thunder, and then I think they play like the Blazers again, and maybe one other uh, bad team. And then they in the month of April they basically just play 
uh, playoff games for the rest of the or playoff teams for the rest of the month. Yeah, well, you you're probably right on that. The first time playoff games, every game is yeah, going to feel like true. it matters, and they have to win it. Um, which they are in this position because of I won't even say how poorly they played. They just weren't a team that was playing at at such a high level that that we could even have these conversations. It's just a product of not being a great team. They for most of the year, weren't even a good team, but they're playing at an elite level now, which means now these games, it's do or die. I think Craig Ackerman was on the broadcast saying, we cannot lose this game. I mean, he, he is 100% right about He's that. correct. You cannot lose to that. You can't lose to the Blazers for any reason, really, but that particular version of them, where Grant Simons and, and Aiton weren't even available, even Matisse Teibel was sitting down. Brogdon was out. He was out. Yeah, you can't lose to that version. Can't even name that starting five. I was thinking about it, and because yes, I was I was echoing um, Ackerman's words uh, to myself as they were like down three at halftime or whatever it was. And I was like, "You cannot lose this game." Like what? And then I was thinking, you know, if they had like, if the Blazers had J- Jeremy Grant and Brogdon, or Jeremy Grant and. Um, Aiton, or if they had two of the guys that were out, I'd be like, okay, this is like kind of a game we've seen the Rockets lose. I mean, we've literally seen them lose at home to the Trailblazers before because of crazy Brogdon shots that he makes. But I was thinking, yeah, you know, they're playing a little bit over their head right lately. They they haven't been playing good teams. This is a this is a uh, this is the type of game that teams lose to kind of break uh, winning streaks. And then I saw that they had some guy named Delano Banton uh, leading their team in scoring. And I was like, actually, you can't lose this game. No. <laughs> actually, there's, there's no, no excuse no excuse to lose this game. No matter how hard uh, Dylan Brooks tried, uh, the Rockets uh, the Rockets did enough on offense. Yeah, Ryan Rupert, he of the number 72. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I think it's Rupert, actually. Ru- Rupert. He's Rupert until he changed that number. <laughs> you don't get to be Rupert with number 72. <laughs> You're Rupert to me. Rupert. Yeah. Stand the corner, Rupert. Yeah. Start, he started for the Blazers. You mentioned Delano. Delano Banton. Delano Banton had a good game, 28 points. Yeah. Uh, was probably, if you're, if we're being honest. I'm telling my kids about that. The best player on the floor overall. Just overall. Now, he was a minus 25 because the rest of his team stinks. But, but um, <laughs> You can't hold that to Banton. Yeah, I'm Come not going to blame him for that. Uh, Jalen Green was a leading scorer again for the Rockets, but he did it on 26 shots. So it was very reminiscent of. The, the Jalen Green we had come to know and maybe loathe. But uh, but the, the Blazers stink so badly that the Rockets controlled that second half after being down by by four at the half. And, the, and they found the way. Jock, Jock Landell was good, in the, was good in the first quarter, really kept the Rockets afloat as, uh, as Portland. I mean, they weren't playing well, but they were playing better than we would, had hoped. But the Rockets win 110 to 92, which means all eyes point to South Beach with the Warriors in Miami. As 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 I said, by tomorrow morning. Well, earlier than that, by tonight, your Rockets could have the could be tied with the Warriors. And Sean has pointed out because he wants to ruin our fun. They don't own the tiebreaker, and being tied on March 26 means next to nothing. No, no, I'm just I'm just instilling like Ime Udoka. I'm, I'm instilling a toughness in the Rockets fan in the base. fan base. I don't want I don't want people to you know shoot off fireworks when. When Hami Hakez sends uh, <laughs> sends the Warriors packing, when the corpse of Patty Mills makes a three late yeah. to seal the deal, yeah, for well, the Miami Heat. When when they see, oh my God, Tyler Hero, I'm they in love w- with this game. They wish uh, that dude hasn't played since Feb- late February. Oh, he hasn't. No, oh. he's 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 injured quite a bit oh, this year. So uh, now so now the Miami Heat can go on a run, as apparently it always happens. But I mean, he's been hurt for quite a, quite a while, and they've been treading water. So he can say, see, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> It doesn't. They don't always take off when I'm out. Uh, they've been fairly mid uh, since his since his absence. But yeah, if you, if you want to want if you want something to watch with the Rockets off, tune in. I don't know if it's going to be on NBA TV. No, it will not. So you have to use League Pass and watch the Heat and see if they can beat Golden State. And then your Rockets can uh can be even, and we'll see if they'll they leave the the Warriors in the dust. Of course, they have the Warriors coming up here in a little bit, and that'll. I don't know if that'll decide the race, but it'll it'll play a part in determining whether the Rockets have a real shot down the stretch uh, to to make the plan, which is was something that felt like out of bounds. But this show was ahead of ahead of the game. 
we were talking about meaningful basketball before anyone here, and we're going to take that one and say, look, if you want someone to lead you, make it the Del Olaye show featuring Sean Bates because yeah. we we have foresight. Re- real ball knowers. Yeah. Here. I mean, John don't know ball. Jeremy Grant, Jeremy Brandon was hoping for a tank. He don't know ball. Of course, when Shingun got hurt, I knew the Rockets would take off. Yeah. In fact, the Portland Trailblazers broadcast, and you're asking me, Del, why are we watching the Portland Trailblazers broadcast? Because I find ways to watch games because I don't have – I don't have a version of live TV where I have Space City, um, so I have to watch it in different ways. We won't talk about them explicitly. I just find ways to watch games. They were talking about the on-off as far as what Jalen Green is when Shagoon's on the floor and when he's off. There's like an eight-point difference between between Jalen Green's numbers when Shagoon is around and when he's not. I don't know what it means for the future. Only that Jalen Green apparently appreciates not having another <laughs> – option out there to throw the ball into that's all it means I don't know I don't know if if they'll figure out a way where they can both excel but the numbers are out there that he's a much more explosive player when he doesn't have to be concerned about getting Shingun the ball that's all that's all it doesn't mean anything other than maybe maybe a five guy who takes up usage isn't what Jalen Green needs but the Rockets will figure that out next season what matters this season they've got a real chance to make a playoff push. And by playoff push, make the play in. And if you then you have to win two more games. So it's not like it'll get easy, but the Rockets are playing good enough basketball where it is now a question of whether playing the Lakers in LA in a play in game is going to be on the table. Hey, they've beaten the beat the Lakers uh what, three times this year? Two times at least. Yeah, now they will be they a, beat them a few times this year. Yeah, now it'll be a little different. They won't have the size that Shingun provides, so we'll see if being smaller and more athletic against a big Laker team um, will will help, or the difference will be no Shingun and then the Lakers win. We'll see, but we know at at least that the head coach thinks LeBron's a soft ass boy, and and that's really a fun idea to that see helps. if those two happen to see each other again. Sean, I. The NFL is doing things to change the way the game will look. And I'm going to ask you, um, are you a guy who's against change? Think about it. You know what's happening in the NFL. I'll, I'll let the people know if they don't. Multiple rule changes are, are in effect to change the way the NFL will look in 2024. And I know there's some pushback. The man who sits in this chair before me when he's not dirty, dirtying up the area had had major questions and kind of kind of called called it gimmicky what the NFL is doing. I'm okay with it. I don't mind change. Maybe you do, Sean. We'll talk about that on the other side. And certainly if you guys have thoughts on what the NFL is doing to change particularly special teams and and player safety, call in 713-780-3776. You can always tweet at us at Sean A. Mapes and at Del V2. We're just getting started here on the show. We'll be back.
This is the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome back. And before we get to the NFL news regarding changes to the kickoff and, well, you guys know about the hip drop tackle, which is a which is part of the conversation as well. The Texans have made something official that was rumored and then maybe was was pulled back, or possibly possibly because they couldn't acquire a, a Keenan Allen type. But Shaq Mason, they have restructured his base salary and turned it into a signing bonus, which means they now have six point four million dollars in caps, more in cap space. So if you are a person who likes to keep track of that at Maybe you have a bookmark for Texans over the cap or a spot track. However you decide, the Texans now have $6.4 million. Sack Mason gets a nice little chunk of change up front, and the Texans have more money to spend for what? Who knows? There are some <laughs> What's that? We got news? We have breaking news. The Texans have a new owner. It's Cal McNair, who's it- voted unanimously to take it over for his mom. Okay, so the the change of power is complete. We've peaceful gone, transfer of power. If not if Kerry had his way. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess it wasn't that peaceful. It wasn't peaceful. that peaceful. He tried to commit her almost. Um, we've had, we go from Janice to Cal, and the eldest boy doesn't get his way. Uh, Cal McNair is now the official principal owner of the Texans, which means that we hope to lean on Hannah. For, because we think she's behind all the positive things. I, there's no real clear evidence of that. We just assume that she is the reason that things have gone well over the last year or so. But Cal McNair voted unanimously to be the principal owner of the Texans. Now, was that 31 or I guess 30 nothing since the Packers don't have one? Or I guess they have a chairman. But anyway, was it was it all voted yes or was – there was just no no vote, and Amy Adams Skrunk uh, actually uh, abstained, Abstain. like we <laughs> yeah. like we talked about. Yeah, if we, you missed it yesterday, we suggested that because of the rivalry between really the at the top level, the ownerships, Hannah and Cal against Amy Adams Skrunk, that she might abstain as opposed to just voting no. I think if we had found out someone abstained, we probably would have heard it. Yeah, I think it's a clear thirty-one to nothing. Um, if the Packers have an actual owner, convo, which I assume they do, they have a chairman at least, someone who yeah, represents that's what them. I was thinking. Someone who represents them. So Cal gets through unanimously. He is your official owner. If you if you are concerned about that, no need to be concerned. The tra- a peaceful transition of power once the judges got involved and said, "Hey, Carrie, knock it off. Stop trying to Stop take that. power away from your mother. Uh, she can she can say Cal is the one she wants, and and we're good." A big a big old Kindle energy from uh, from from Carrie. The old, like I said, the eldest boy does not win, um, and I guess we can all feel good about that. We've got we've got Cal in charge, which is amazing that people can breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, right. I mean, remember where we were? I mean, just fourteen months ago, hoping that someone <laughs> would take it off his hands, <laughs> hoping that Kerry would swoop in. I mean, we didn't know all the the back the backstory of what he would have to do to his potentially do to his mom to get it done, but. The hope was that someone not named a current McNair that we know was involved with the team would come in and change things, even if it had to be a sell, as long as the team stayed in Houston. Now, no worries in, on that. Uh, we have solid ownership as long as D'Amico continues to win because if, if it changes, then all of a sudden we don't have solid ownership anymore. If Cal, uh, I, Someone put it well. Cal's not a wartime consigliere. He's not a wartime owner. If things are going poorly – that is true. That do, that seems like that's the case on Cal McNair. Is that is is that he's not he's not a good crisis manager. No, he's not a good um, yeah wartime consigliere. Like he's he's good in the peace times. He can drop new uniforms and throw up the H. Yeah, if, and, there's, a, if there's a leak, of yeah. a, and it, like as I said before, a, a Walmart brand Derek Stingley is wearing the uniform. He can put out the stylized version and get people to calm down a little bit of what the uniforms look like on actual players. But if it was some real stuff, yeah, nah. there's not a lot of confidence nah. there. You can't you can't do an interview with Big Sarge and get out of that one. <laughs> like you gotta, that's true. You gotta make some actual tough decisions, Cal. Yeah, uh, yeah. just just make sure Nick Casario drafts well again, and, and CJ plays well, and, and keeps Jim- his 
keeps his personal life clean. Yeah, and D'Amico's great. Then Cal can can thrive. So <laughs> let's not have a bump on the road because if there is one, I, I feel like we're going we're going into a ditch, and not the ditch that Bob talked about pulling the ox out of, just an actual ditch that screws over the team. Uh, but thankfully, we're not in that mode. We've got a smooth paved road, and things are all trending in the right direction. And we'll get into something about what what the country, at least the betting country, thinks about the Texans uh, as far as their their win total. That came out today. I'll, we'll get into that. But first, I did want to get into the NFL news regarding the kickoff. The kickoff is changing. They want to bring kickoffs back, at least kickoff returns back. So if you are unaware, here are really the specifics. Kick, the kickoffs will still be from the 35, but the the kickoff team will line up at the opponent's 40. And the and the return team will line up at the 35. So it'll be five yards between the two. Um, if a kickoff lands between the zero between the goal line and the 20 yard line of the receiving team, no one can move until the returner touches it, whether it whether it lands and hits the ground or it's caught on the fly. You cannot move until he touches the football. If the ball is kicked into the end zone and lands in the end zone directly, the ball comes out to the 35. That's the new touchback. If the ball bounces at the five-yard line, rolls into the end zone, and is downed, then that's what we know as a – what we know the current touchback yardage marker is a 20. And um, I believe if, like, if we see a squib kick or the ball is kicked short of the landing zone, like, say, the ball lands at the 25-yard line, then we're moving the ball out to the 40. Sure, and on its face, it feels like it's complicated, but once you hear it or read it, you'll be fine. I mean, for the goal is to increase safety. We don't want guys running at each other full speed, and they want kickoffs to come back. And much like cha- anything that changes, people are a little upset or freaking out. No change. It's weird. It's gimmicky until it happens, and we'll get used to it because football, football rules all. And as long as there's football, we'll find a way, even if it bothers us, to be okay with the new kickoff. And if you want to see how it works, just just go on YouTube and type XFL kickoff. That's that's the that's the basis for it. The NFL has tweaked it a little bit, but that's where it comes from. You can watch those clips and see how those kickoffs have played out. I'm sure you'll probably get a lot of the kickoff return touchdown stuff, but not everything was a return for a touchdown. You can still make tackles and still make good defensive plays uh, or at least good special teams plays. So uh, that's the new rule. That's the biggest rule. We talked about the other rule changes yesterday. Now, Sean, are you one of those people who is, what are they doing to the game I love? Or are you, are you adaptable? How, how is your first react? What's your first reaction to what's going to happen come, come the fall? I, I'm, I'm pro this uh, because you look at what kickoffs had become the last handful of years. And it really is just like a play that you don't even need to watch in the NFL. Just the kicker's going to kick it five yards deep in the end zone. Yeah. That's that's kind of be it. Or if a guy does return it, it feels like 75% of the time it's a mistake and they don't get it to the 20 or 25. <laughs> it feels like. Yeah, it feels like you've made an awful mistake. Yeah, now you screwed like, up your field position. So anytime you can take a play from. You're upset when someone does a football thing on the field to oh now this is has room for excitement I'm I'm pro that so you know get turning this from a kind of formality play it feels like where you know how many times did a game start and they're like and here's the kickoff out of bounds all right <laughs> Pat Pat Mahomes runs onto the field he's gonna you know like the it felt like the broadcasts were almost built around. Okay, we kind of have to stop for the ceremony of kicking the ball away. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes through the uprights, and now we show the quarterback trotting onto the field. So it like, almost felt like a celebrity from your town throwing out a first pitch. Yeah. Let's Okay, we'll watch this, and then we'll move on to the actual action. It, it wasn't a thing, and it just they broadcasted it because, well— It's part of the game. It's part of the game. But literally, you, it's part of the game. But literally, if they, they prop— Probably would have rather ran a commercial, a 15 second commercial. <laughs> yeah, and, because nothing's going to happen here. And you know, for for uh, so for me, obviously the kickoffs weren't working. So you have two options: either try to fix it or just give everybody the ball at the 25. Sure. And 
this is better than just giving everyone the ball at the twenty five. You you keep special you keep special teams in the game, Dell. It's still one third of the game. I've heard that before. Yeah, it's, so it's an important phase. Yeah, so I'm I'm willing to try this. Now this you know, they try this and this doesn't work or has some unintended consequence or something, then we can talk. But I I feel like it's worth a shot because yeah. what we were dealing with last year was you just get the ball at the twenty five every time. All the time. And and you're 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 praying you have you your kickoff returner doesn't yeah bring it out of the end zone. Or, or they do bring it out and then there's like a block in the back and you're getting it from at the ten. From the ten. Or, yeah. Or, so yeah. It it like there was no upside to the play, and which is funny because we literally uh, cover a team where and that two kickoff return yes, touchdowns. Last I mean, obviously, uh, obviously Andrew Beck is just a freak athlete, so really any rule set uh, can't really contain him. He's like a no weapon formed against yeah, him shall he, prosper. He's like a <laughs> he's a white Devin Hester, so uh, <laughs> so you know that there's only so much they can do about that. Yeah, but uh, no, I. I'm I'm excited for it. I'm not I'm not uh what oh this is gimmicky. It's like, well, you know, they kind of need a gimmick to to save this play. You know, like you could also say two point conversions are gimmicky. You can say overtime is gimmicky. Like there's a lot of stuff that's gimmicky that's in the NFL. Uh this is one of them and it takes a play that sucks into a play that uh can hopefully work. I am there with you. I am adaptable and we'll see how it goes. I, I didn't watch a lot of the XFL. So I I don't have a real negative or positive thought about it one way or the other, but bring it on. If you have a dynamic returner, more, more power to you, and it forces special teams to mean something again, at least the kickoffs, and and maybe we'll see how creative these kickers can get put putting the ball in certain spots. Now, obviously, the guys can't move until it's caught, but if you put the ball in the corner of the end zone, I mean, not corner of the end zone, but oh. A coffin corner kickoff, and the guy still yeah. has to return it. That could play to your advantage too. Yeah, that's another thing that that makes this more interesting. That kickers now don't just kick the ball as hard as they can. Like that's not the strategy anymore. There actually is some skill now <laughs> yeah, involved. Yeah, th- there's some skill, and like you said, there could be some strategy that develops um, from that of trying to cough or, coffin corner people. And if there's like a great returner, you could try doing something else. Like there's just a lot of different things that um, that can happen now. Yeah, and if you do have a great returner who's proven himself dangerous, you have to weigh the option of kicking the ball straight into the end zone because you'd rather have them start at the 35 than him being able to return kicks in this new format. So there will be some actual strategy involved. And I welcome that. Make it a play that matters again. David and Eric, I see you. Eric wants to talk about Astros pitching, and David wants to talk about the new rule change. If you want to talk about anything, 713-780-3776. We'll get to you guys on the other side. We're late for a break. We'll be back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Vertex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Back here with you on the show. Remember, remember, excuse me, you can always watch the show. I mean, if our computer doesn't crash, you can always watch the show on, on YouTube. ESPN Houston is what you search for. And certainly ESPN975.com is how you listen to us if you're in front of a computer. My choice is to always download the have the app on my phone, download that. It's, at least I think, the easiest, easiest way to listen and keep up to date about what's going on on the station. But David wants to talk about the new rule change. What's up, David? Hey, Dale. Uh, thanks, guys, for taking the call. Uh, you know, I was just going to say, I, anybody complaining about this rule is, is just has never seen it happen uh, or just is complaining about something to just make noise because it is uh, – I am in, a football fan and been to plenty of XFL games. We've eaten a season ticket holder for a while because, yeah, I'm a football nut. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, it's just, it brings a lot of action back into it. And it was a hope that me and all the guys that went to the games um, had hoped that they would bring into the NFL. So I was relatively pleased that they did. I mean, it makes it relevant. From another uh, position, I feel like it's going to get the butts in the seats sooner. Uh, maybe that's just sm- a small part of it. But, I mean, it gets everybody excited right there for kickoff because there is zero excitement about a kickoff right now. David, you said you – our season ticket holder to XFL game. So what is the percentage of, let's say, big plays to being tackled at the 25 or 30? What If you can remember, how did that go as far as? You know, I will, I will tell you, you would have a, the, a good run back is something that's going to be around the 50, uh, you know, somewhere around midfield. So it is going to expose the game to better field position. That was the, the best thing that I saw. And then there's other times where if you don't get your blocking and tackling back, you're, I've seen it be all the way back strategically kicking and have somebody pinned down inside the 20. So there's a lot more strategy that goes into it. The, a lot of these special teams uh, um, uh, coaches that were in the XFL are going to start you know, doing a little bit of side work or maybe working for the NFL teams as well just because it is going to add some strategy back to it. And it's, and it's, it's worth it. I mean, it is – there should be nobody complaining about the, and I heard LZ this morning, you know, I think he was just probably goofing more than anything else, but I mean, there, there's, it, it just makes the, the game better all the way around. And I can assure everybody of that. All right, man. Appreciate that. David firsthand knowledge, watched the XFL and was at the games and said it brought excitement. I appreciate that, man. If anyone else has his type of experience, or maybe you have a differing opinion, bring it. Uh, but that's the new rule in place. You're going to see kickoffs mean something again. And, as he said, it'll bring a different element and some strategy. We'll see how the gen- the mad geniuses on special teams figure out ways to combat what it feels like an opportunity to gain great field position. How do they train their kickers? How do they train their their cup their their covering units to limit the damage? I do, I think I think it will be a little bit less at you know ball at the fifty than the XFL was just because it's like NFL defenders. And I wonder how many of those are broken tackles and stuff like that. Yeah, and they're also going to be they're going to be lined up five yards apart. Five yard, well, five yards apart, but actually further away from their turner. So maybe they have an opportunity. So maybe not one miss lane. Mm-hmm. Maybe a miss lane doesn't turn into a a giant gain because yeah. the returner is still farther away than he would be uh, in a, in the XFL situation. So a lot of things to to have to play out. I think it puts uh, an onus on the returner to be kind of, kind of uh, at least football smart, yeah. knowing where you're catching the football, understanding that you can't run parallel for very long, or or you're going to cost your team major field position. So, yeah, an, an element to the game uh, that that we'll see play out in, in the in the preseason. We'll see how people how how excited people are for it. The blun- the blunders early in the year are going to be. Amazing. Yes. I mean, we need we need to get Kadarius Tony back there returning kicks. We need to we need to do anything we can to get guys that just do not understand what we're doing here. I think a lot of guys will will think this is an opportunity because because they're just gonna believe, hey, this person's not coming full speed at me. I got a real shot. I think a lot of reversing of fields. Someone's gonna I think tr- retreating is gonna happen. Try to return it uh, like a kick in the end zone. They're not going to let it too. bounce. They're just going to try to return because they're not going to be. Oh, I'm I'm in the end zone now. Yeah, I think there's going to be a a lot of opportunities to see who who should be back there and who shouldn't be. 
and and having a a somewhat intelligent kickoff returner is going to mean quite a bit. Do you think special teams coordinators were for or against this rule? Well, I know NFL the, special team coordinators. Well, according to some of the reporting, special teams coordinators pushed for this. Some of the prominent ones, like Darren Rizzi's been around a long time. He was one of the guys mentioned as someone who was a proponent of this. I think Andy Reid was. He's not a special teams guy, but he was a proponent for it as well. So it uh, did have some support among, I guess, the the establishment, if we're going to call Andy Reid that. But also the special teams guys were for because it makes their jobs more valuable. Now, if you suck at special teams as a coach, you're probably hoping, hey, can we just kick the ball in the end zone? But if you're yeah. a Darren Rizzi, an established type, you're like, hey, man, I got I got ideas. I, I know I can make myself far more valuable. That is true. That's true. I was thinking that they would be against it because they're like, oh, makes makes my job so much harder. Yeah. Well, if you stink at it, you probably just want to be able to kick the ball in the end zone and keep yeah. it moving. Yeah, just kick it as hard as you can, dude. Yeah. All right, cool. Did my job for today. Now they have to sit there and watch watch XFL tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oddly enough, those guys aren't like us. Sean, they're, we, they're highly motivated yeah, individuals. To do oh. yes, to prove their worth. We're like, oh man. I got to do this. How much do they make? Come on. I'm sure they make, I'm, well, I'm sure those salaries, depending on who you are uh, and how long you've been, you've been in the game, probably in the, probably a guy's probably making NFL coordinator money. I mean, or college coordinator money, like an, an OC. I'm, I'm sure a special teams coordinator is probably making over a million dollars, maybe two, uh, depending how long they've been doing it. Eric, and if it's Eric Wong, I can, I can kind of guess where this call is going to go. What's up, Eric? Hey guys, shorter twig times in uh, sports show history. Yeah, uh, with Lake Snell gone, can the Astros pick up another starting pitcher like Montgomery? And also, where is P. Diddy? He said if he's going down, he's going to take down the rest of Hollywood. Is he going to be found unalive? I'll hang up and listen. Well, if the question is, can the Astros sign Jordan Montgomery? Sure. I mean, they can if they wanted to. It seems unlikely they will. Uh, they were, but they were in on Blake Snell, as Eric pointed out. I don't imagine it'll happen because of Blake's because of Jordan Montgomery's asking for what Blake Snell was asking for. The Astros found that too. They found that that ass too much. It was it wasn't a number they were willing to reach, and I don't imagine Jordan Montgomery's going to be far off of Blake Snell's number. It's a question of what the price is. If it's a price the Astros like, sure. But if it's in the Blake Snell range, then no. He Jordan Montgomery will continue to wait. Do you think Jordan Montgomery's not on a major league rock? Well, we're days away. I guess he won't be. Unless he signs today or tomorrow, yeah. he won't be. I guess he won't be. I asked that question, and I realized opening day is Thursday. So there's a real shot that Jordan Montgomery is not on a major league roster by the time the season starts. And if you're Jordan Montgomery at this point, do you just wait like wait until someone gets hurt? Like just you just wait until someone on like he's Atlanta, a- someone on a contender get uh, LA, hurt. LA, someone in Houston, someone in wherever else gets hurt. Yeah. Well, waiting for Houston, two guys are on the IL now. They ex- they're expected to return. It's not depth. There's not season ending injuries, so there. So that's probably why there isn't such a uh, a real rush to sign them. But Houston, you would think, would be a team he could have found his way on, and yeah. and the price is is the price, and and we know Jim Crane certainly will stick to it. So the answer is no to Jordan Montgomery, and uh, we'll see. Where where he lands? As far as his, what was the second question? Uh, P Diddy. P Diddy. I saw TMZ saw, said he was pacing around a Miami private airport. I'm not sure where he is now. Then we saw the reports of the plane being in Barbuda or Barbuda, however that's pronounced. Um, no I don't, extradition. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, we've seen enough TV shows to know why he's flying I've to seen, a certain spot. I've seen enough movies. Yeah, we know. We seen enough. There's enough things out there that we've seen to let us know why he would want to be in certain countries. I don't know if he'll take down all of Hollywood. He may just have to worry about himself, uh, particularly when his sons had handcuffs on them from and as they were being removed from his L.A. home. Mm-hmm. Not great. Funny enough, the movies were like the type of movie where this comes up would be Bad Boys. And Bad Boys 4, I think the trailer just dropped. Yes, that's kind of what made me think of okay. it. That's why it's so at top of the mind. But I'm pretty sure that came up in Bad Boys 2. No extradition. No extradition. Uh, Bad, Bo- Bad Boys 4 is out. I mean, Will Smith, the there. first time we've seen him since. Is that his first major thing since the slap? Uh, as no, far as a movie? or he has, a, has he been in, it's been been like in anything? I'll, I'll I know he was in a video game that bombed. Like, his face, like, he is one of the, the main characters, at least the, 
his face is. I'm not sure. That, that's a tough. I'm tough not sure. One. I'm not sure he's playing Will Smith in the video game, but he's got his face scanned for it, and no one knew the video game existed until they told us it bombed. Uh, yeah, that that's a tough one to be like. He was in a video game. Dot dot dot. No one knows the name. Dot dot dot. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's I've, like oh, man. I know nothing about the game other than they show the the image of his face scan in it and I guess the character he's playing, and that it bombed. That's he, all I've heard about it. He was in an Apple TV Plus uh, thing called Emancipation. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I s- didn't see it. I, I saw the preview on Apple TV. I saw the, hey, you want to watch this? I said, no. No, thanks. I'm good. Runaway slave movie? I'm, I'm out. I've seen it. Look, I, 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 I'm the child of a woman who was born in Georgia. I've seen a lot of them. It, just, it was just part of the, the curriculum growing up. Enough. I don't want to see any more. No moss. No more. Um, I've I've seen my fair share of those. Hey, give me give me sci-fi and fa- sci-fi fantasy over historical dramas where people who look like me are being put in bad situations. I've I've had the trauma from that just because my mom was like, "Hey, we're watching this." It's like, okay, I'd rather watch Spider Man, but <laughs> I guess we'll watch this. Uh, so uh, Emancipation, I guess, if you want to watch it on Apple TV, go right ahead. But Bad Boys 4, I will watch. I'll be there because the team of Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, I'm in on. I wonder if they'll make reference to what – they'll make some type of reference to what he d- did to Chris Rock. He'll slap someone. Or, or – He'll slap Martin Lawrence. Or Martin will make a joke and about <laughs> about a, a celebrity wife. slapping a comedian or something. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. If, no, I don't know. If, I think the Jada thing is off limits. Or whoever Mike Lowry's wife would be in the movie. Is it? I know he has a kid from the last movie, a secret kid from the last movie. I don't know if he's gotten married since. No. Uh, we'll I see. I, you, can't, you can't keep Mike Lowry down, you know? No. He's, he's prolific. He's part of his character, actually, is that he is. That, that, yeah, Martin he, Lawrence is the married guy. He's the unmarried yeah, guy. Yeah, and now, and part of the, the, the thing in Bad Boys 3 was he had a surprise kid. Which happens, you know. It happens. I mean, ask Jalen our, Green. Ask our, I was going to just say ask our shooting guard, but you, <laughs> you dropped this name. Oh, that's not that. <laughs> I okay. just wanted people. I just, I think, it's, I always think it's funnier to allude to it and let people, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's talking about that guy, uh, even though it's pretty obvious. We are way due for a break, so we'll do that now. We'll come back with more on the NFL. The Texans are, are in the news because D'Amico Ryan's at the owner's meeting, so he was asked several questions. We played some sound from him yesterday. We'll get into what he thought of the the Neil Hunter signing. Probably you would consider the main signing for of the free agency period for the Texans. They also traded for Joe Mixon. He was asked about that and the extension that was given. So D'Amico talks about a couple of big acquisitions. We'll hear from him. We'll also hear from Ime Odoka on Jalen Green. Jalen Green played really well in the second half, particularly in that third quarter, to give the Rockets some breathing room. So we'll hear from Ime. We'll, we'll hear from D'Amico. Ah, we won't hear from Joe Espada. They lost to the Space Cowboys. You don't, you don't get, you don't get a spot on the show if you lose to the Space Cowboys. Shout out to the Space Cowboys. We we run their games here. One and zero against the Astros, beating up on Big Brother. We'll be back.
The Del Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Del Olalea. Welcome back. We are way over, so we'll make this quick. We'll just talk about what Sean brought up during the break. Sean, what's the news, according to Schefter? According to Adam Schefter, the NFL is pla- is planning on uh, having a Christmas Day game this year in 2024. Now, that's normal. They've had Christmas Day they have had Christmas Day games in the past. Yes. Why is this one unique? The one, the reason this one is unique is that Christmas is on a Wednesday. Yes, which would mean, at least we're speculating, that they're going to have to play games on Saturday, which they do at that time of the year, and pluck two teams from the Saturday slate to go play on Wednesday, which, yes. which is still rough either way. Late in the year, you're beat up and you got a short week, but – Away it's, from your family, you know. Well, person. maybe that's a benefit depending on who uh, you are. You well, never, you never well. know, or you never know. I don't know. Um, but in this case, instead of Sunday, Thursday, it will be Saturday, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But that's still rough. That's tough for for that type of turnaround. But I guess they would say, well, then you have a, a mini bye week to start January. So I guess if we're trying to look for positives, it would be that. But we'll see how that. We'll see. I'm sure people will be up in arms. But uh, it, it's the same thing. Did they? It's the same thing as long as those two teams are putting, being pulled from the Saturday schedule. Yes. Uh, in case you're wondering, Robert Griffin the uh, third replied to the Schefter tweet with a. Uh, he said Wednesday Christmas, and it's a picture of Wednesday Adams from the show Wednesday. So Jenna Ortega. Uh, yes. Uh, with a Santa hat. Uh, photoshopped on her head. So that that was RG three RG three's uh, contribution. Do you think story. he had that? In the tuck, ready to go for any any time Wednesday and Christmas was brought up, or did good or, question, Hold or on, did he thing. know this announcement was coming, or did he just immediately? Well, that would be in the tuck, or did he just immediately go make this happen? Or okay, so Adam Schefter tweeted uh, tweeted the original tweet at ten o four a.m. RG three tweeted at ten o seven a.m. So three min three minutes three after. minutes later he had he had the picture. Now looking at this. Is it well done? Yeah, pretty well done. May someone who isn't Robert Griffin III could have done this in three minutes. You don't think he was capable? I I just I'm unsure of his Photoshop skills, and therefore here, do you want me to send this to you? Sure. I as I judge it at, as we wrap up I don't, the first hour. I don't. I think I think a social media or a you know, a, yeah, social media member, team member. Would have had to make this in three minutes. I think so. Or he had it in the tuck. For whatever reason, he had a Wednesday Christmas picture ready. <laughs> which, which which one is worse? If he first, if he directed a social one. media team to do it, or if he had it in a in a tuck ready to go? No, that the second one was worse. I mean, maybe maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe it's it was made for this announcement, and because he's yeah, because he's high up there at ESPN, Adam Schefter. Knew already knew this news is coming, and so and maybe Robert and Griffin the third knew he just doesn't break news. Yeah. He doesn't break news because that's Schefter's thing. Yeah, and that that could be it. But uh, either way, uh, the real Wednesday would if if you know she wasn't a fictional character would be pissed. Yeah, she would not be. She was not interested frozen. in having a red hat celebrating Christmas on her head. She also would probably be against uh, the football game on Wednesday. Yeah, she probably think it's brutish and uh, and uh, unworthy. Of uh of the human condition, but uh that Wednesday is in Beetlejuice too. She is in the new Beetlejuice as movie. At, at, no, <laughs> as the daughter of of uh na- what's her name? Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Yes, yes. So she is in. It's all. She is in Wednesday. She's in Beetlejuice. She's got a very gothic type of a uh, yeah. of resume going right now, and then she's also in a movie with uh. With Bill, with uh, Bilbo Baggins, where she plays a a a uh, seductress as a high schooler, so a white swath. Well, wait, Bilbo from uh, The Hobbit, Martin Freeman. Oh, I was thinking the Bilbo from. 
<laughs> from the first movie. Not the not the, <laughs> the not, old man. N- no, not the Bilbo from the from the original trilogy. Yeah, from the that, Hobbit that, trilogy. That's why that's why it took me a second to get the wheels turned. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no, Martin Freeman. You might know him from uh, the Sherlock series if you watched it with uh, mm-hmm. Benedict Cumberbatch. He, He's the white guy in Black Panther. That too. I mean, I don't know his name, but that's the appropriate way to describe him because I don't know his name. Uh, but Martin Freeman's in that. She's seducing him, blah, 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 teacher, teacher, student relationship. And she's also playing hmm. the likes of uh, Wednesday Adams and the daughter of the main character from Beetlejuice. There's been a lot of uh, students seducing teacher or teacher seducing student movies recently. It's the thing, yeah. You got a May November, which which I haven't watched. is on Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. I think there was another one, too. Well, there are plenty. I mean, it's no. Just, but go, I mean, to, like, just go to Lifetime. I mean, in the last like six months, there's been like actual movies. For, so, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess it might. It's a thing. I guess it is a thing. But I, it's always been. It's been a thing for a while. But, but now, this is like this is like when like there is uh, what Armageddon and Deep Impact. Like, yeah. It's like why are we just we're, making? Are this you thing? an Armageddon or Deep Impact person? <laughs> Armageddon. Come on. I kind of like Deep Impact. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to miss a thing. That's get, get Ben Affleck, get Ben Affleck out of my face. What? Sorry. Wow. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, Bruce Willis guy. Understood. Big. Uh, Liv Tyler's guy. in the movie too. It's got the better star power. Yeah. But uh, I like Taya Leone breaking news. <laughs> and Deep Impact. Yeah. And, but and the I, other, and but, I had Morgan Freeman as the president. Oh uh, yeah, mm, that is that that's. A, a key part in its favor. Yeah. But uh, Armageddon has Steve Buscemi. Is that a positive thing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> look, oh look, don't look, do I, that. I, I hit him. I hit don't him. In, do that. I hit him where it hurts. I like Steve Buscemi. But I'm still taking Mark. I'm still taking Morgan Owen as, as the president. In it? Yeah, that doesn't help. He's, oh. He helped. He's okay. I don't care. Longhorn legend Owen Wilson. Doesn't I'm, I understand the cast. <laughs> of Armageddon far outseeds the cast of Deep Impact. I am just saying, as far as a narrative and a story, I kind of like Deep Impact. Huh. I don't. I, I'm aware. I can tell. I, I like I like the premise that it's easier to train oil drillers to be astronauts than, than astronauts, astronauts to be, be oil, oil drillers. drillers. Yes, That's because, a yes, because astronauts aren't the, aren't the brilliant, <laughs> nearly, well, actually, Nuclear scientists, and a lot of them in some cases. You know, um, rocket scientists, what astronauts are, can't, can't, train them, out. can't train them to be drillers. You need the steady hand of Bruce Willis. Yeah, and that's and why I want— Ben Affleck. That's why there was a disaster up there, because they actually asked the drillers to be the be the, be the astronauts. <laughs> that's why all but, like, three of them died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing how that occurred. Man, we're deep in our bag right now. We gotta go to break. But hey, if you wanna if you wanna talk about the virtues of Deep Impact versus Armageddon, you can call in. Were there any other disaster movies in that mode where there was two of the same thing, but they they were both created at the same time? I'm trying to think. I, that one, those two stick out. I can't think of another scenario where we had competing disaster movies of the same ilk, whether it be an asteroid or, or a hurricane or something. Yeah, or like, yeah. Yeah, I think that that one uh, takes cake. Was, How come there wasn't like a competing twister movie? Yeah, called Cl- Cyclones was or something. It, was, wasn't there like the Greatest Storm or something or something like that? Or Maybe like Superstorm or something. Maybe, but it wasn't Geostorm. That was the name. Yeah, of that one. was more recent than yeah. Uh, and Sharknado. <laughs> Those had to have overlapped. <laughs> Geostorm's got to be hey. Leave us out of it. Don't. I, I don't know. I, Geostorm can't turn it, their nose up. In it. It's pretty bad. But they're like, hey, we, we got into theaters. Don't give us a sci-fi treatment, sci-fi channel treatment. But, yeah, Geostorm wasn't good either. Is that one of the – um, what's his name? I'll think of it when we come Gerard back. Gerard Butler? That guy. He's in a lot of those. I'm all over Gerard He's in Butler. Greenland. Isn't he like in Greenland, which is another one of those movies too? Yeah, he's in uh, 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 Plane. Oh, he is in Plane. <laughs> which is going to get a sequel. I have plane is gonna getting plane two. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like, like ship or boat. Well, you gotta change it up. Got Can't, got to. You gotta keep people on their toes. That'll wrap up hour one. If if you if you thought we were gonna get out of the hour without nonsense, you don't you don't know what this show's about. If you want to call in about your favorite disaster movies and why Gerard Butler is a, a god amongst men, seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. You can call about other stuff too. We'll be back.
Our debate over Deep Impact versus Rod versus Armageddon continues. Rotten Tomatoes, the critics think Deep, Deep Impact was better by a whopping 2%, 45% to 43%. The public, though, the audience score way in favor of Armageddon. A 73% audience score for Armageddon, a 43% audience score for Deep Impact. So the people, the sheep, mm. easily swayed by star power, went with Armageddon. Hey, I'm a, I'm a man of the people. You and John Granada. Yeah, both you do men two shows with men of the people. <laughs> okay. Let's see how many sweets you spend time in <laughs> going forward. I, 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 got, I got some time to catch up. I that, got some that, time to that's catch true. Up. His his sweet life didn't begin at twenty seven. It, no. it started started way later in life. Also, you mentioned the the Rotten Tomato scores of those uh, two movies, both solidly in the forties. Uh huh. Um, I feel like every movie we've talked about today <laughs> has a Rotten Tomato score in the forties. If they're lucky, I don't think Ge- Geo Storm Ge- no, is in Ge- the forties. Geo Storm is half that. <laughs> no, there's no <laughs> chance it got the forty percent. 40 um but yeah i mean we've watched those movies you know what we're talking about those are those those movies are my wheelhouse yeah like tnt you mentioned usa or spike sci-fi hell yeah. when yeah. they first came out when people were still going to Redbox, box yeah. go get yourself the geostorm release on Redbox and watch it these are perfect movies to spend exactly 199 on and, and you, return it the next you morning rush back to make sure you didn't pay extra because <laughs> there was no need we move on now. The Rockets, you, know, you know, you know what's been a movie late, lately? For you, go ahead. Yeah, the Houston Rockets and the way they're playing basketball. That's been a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie, dog. Uh, it, it is a movie. The Rockets won nine in a row. Now have the longest won their ninth in a row over Portland, the Portland B team. Uh, guys that you have never seen play basketball before, unless for some reason Portland has been your league pass team, and what a sad league pass team that would be. But they win last night. The Rockets win their ninth in a row. Jalen Green had a big third quarter to give the Rockets some breathing room, and they kind of ran away with it in the fourth quarter. Portland was scrappy in the in the first half. They were actually leading at halftime, but once Jalen Green got going after a tough shooting run in the first half, uh, it was it, the end of the game was pretty apparent. We knew what the result would be as soon as the Rockets took the lead. There was really no no worry about them losing it. They win that game handily, nine in a row, half a game behind the Warriors. And the Warriors are on the road tonight in Miami. So the Rockets have a chance to be tied, as Sean pointed out, because he likes to rain on people's parade. The Warriors still own the tiebreaker. So the Rockets wouldn't actually be ahead, but they would be tied and win loss. And they do host the Warriors coming up here shortly. So a big game in the, in their future. Rockets got a real shot to make the plan. And the guy who's been the, at the focal point of this recent push is Jalen Green. The scoring is up. The The... The efficiency is up, not last night notwithstanding. It wasn't very efficient last night. It was more February Jalen Green last night. But the second half, he turned it on, and he may talked about Jalen Green's ability to bounce back from a rough first half. You know, he was kind of forcing a little bit early. I looked a little anxious and then kind of grinded it away, started taking the right shots, making the right plays. And um, it was it's not always going to come out, you know, right from the start on fire. And our team was like that in general. But uh, for him to kind of grind through, he had some big rebounds, uh, big defensive plays, and <laughs> play the right way. It was huge for him to uh, really come out in the second half like that. The, he was taking the right shots early, forced a few, but um, with those misses, he stayed confident. He's been scoring at the clip he has. I don't think a, a bad shooting half is going to deter your confidence as far as that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was in general, I think he's just been really playing really well, obviously. And so tonight, um, really talked to him about halftime, about letting the game come to him, taking the right shots, not forcing anything, still finding his teammates playing the way he has been, and he got to go into the second half. We like to call that growth. The ability not to allow your poor shooting in one half of basketball to affect what you are in that second half as the team needed him. You saw how much they struggle, if you watch the game, how much they struggle when his shots weren't falling. Uh, he's the catalyst for everything they do right now. Um, his ability to get to the cup, his ability to shoot the basketball off the dribble, uh, just one-on-one stuff. They don't, don't even have to really run stuff for him. He can he can get his own shot. And when, when he's knocking down stuff, the Rockets become so much better. Uh, but their defense... Still saw it last night. Some of that has to do with the opponent. But despite the offensive struggles in the first half, they stayed in the game until they got things together. So nine in a row for them. And uh, they got to go to Oklahoma City. So the opponent 
and the venue change and the level of competition competition does as well. It'll be a test. The Rockets have played much better on the road as of late. This is a different type of test as Oklahoma City's pushing for the one seed. All of a sudden, Denver's got not a lot of breathing room, but Denver continues to win games. And a team who didn't really care about it last last March, as far as Jokic winning the MVP after he had already won one, they were the one seed last year, and they look well on their way to doing it again. Denver, 51-21, and 21, has won four in a row. And uh, a game up on Oklahoma City, tied in the loss column. So Oklahoma City's gonna wanna, really going to want that game against the Rockets. So we'll see what the Rockets look like as they step up in weight class. And maybe look up and go, we can be Oklahoma City next year because Oklahoma City was a team in a plan. They weren't they weren't what they were. Now they got Chet Holmgren back. He didn't play at all last year. Now the Rockets have had Shingun for quite a bit, but they'll get him back, and you get Cam Whitmore back, you get Tari Eason yeah, back. Tari Eason. You might, he's our Chet Holmgren. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, bold statement by, by Sean. So if you get those three guys back and Ime do, has to do a job of incorporating them into what the Rockets are right now, uh, that'll be up. That'll be the question to see how much you can incorporate three really talented young players into a core, at least a core of this of this month. That's kind of all the roles are kind of finite. They know what they are. We're gonna play through Jalen and Fred Van Fleet will compliment him. We know Amen Thompson's been a force, whether it be around the rim or just playing playing defense. So a lot of things they have to figure out next season. But as far as this season's concerned. Happy to have things to talk about and happy for the Rockets because it's been three years of bad basketball. And now we're talking about maybe a game against the Warriors where will, will people show up? I was watching the game last night, and I don't know the attendance, but it's the Portland Trailblazers, and no one knows who's playing. So I, I understand on a, on a Monday the lack of maybe energy for people to show up there, but I hope. If we're still talking about this Rockets team as a potential playing contender, that people show up, and I imagine they will. It's the Warriors. Uh, Steph will be there as long as health doesn't get, doesn't become an issue, and Draymond and Clay, all the guys they recognize. So you add the the star power of the Warriors and the importance of the game. Hopefully, the Rockets get a good crowd, but we're still games away from that. Um, and if you're a Rocket fan, hope for a Warriors loss in South Beach. The Warriors aren't a great road team. And, but they are better than they are at home, I believe. Ho- hopefully, they get the South Beach, uh, South Beach flu. Yeah, they know. only got the, they, Yeah, it's not the second night of a back to back, so they were able to spin last night in Miami. Good. You think the Warriors will be affected? <laughs> a team, well, a team who should be able to take a trip to Miami seriously, <laughs> but you never know. You never know. You yeah. never know. It, no, it's not. It's not as bad as the. Uh, as the Rockets when they had Harden, when they'd go to Miami, you're just like, all right, L, yeah, <laughs> like like that not not gonna happen. Yeah, uh, that that felt like always a threat that Harden would have spent a good amount of time having a good having a good time, <laughs> and you're always in trouble uh, going going down to Miami. Even when Miami didn't have great teams, uh, the Rockets seemed to to struggle they, they there. They always did. Yeah, because Harden had other things on his mind. It's the middle of the regular season. You want me to focus? Oh, it's come Miami. On. Come on. They have Hassan Whiteside. I can figure it out, hungover. <laughs> Those are Sean's words, not mine. I'm not accusing James Harden of being hungover. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm just not saying that was the case. I'm fi- I'm fine with that that being in the air. Stepping out of, on of a limb. all the things everyone in this city has said on the radio about James Harden, I'm okay with that one. <laughs> Standing by that one, and if I get in trouble for that, so well, be it. Yeah. If James decides to be litigious because of that, yeah. Got- again, I I would I would show I would I would uh, point him to some uh, podcast hours from <laughs> from the past. Oh, Whatever decade. Oh, so you are Shohei Otani. You a snitch. You're gonna blame others. Oh, we haven't talked about. I, no, I just want. I just want. Uh, I just want James Harden to be fully aware of the situation uh, at this station Whist- and others. You're go- you would call it whistleblowing. We would call you a snitch. <laughs> that's what. Saying. That's what we would call just you. Just saying. Hey, if you're worried about someone saying that you might have been hungover during a basketball game in Miami uh, eight years ago, <laughs> got some other stuff. Sean's gonna pull clips and go. Look, man, I'm oh. the least of your problems. Hey. We're going to stick with basketball when we come back because I'm going to ask Sean a question about it's probably the biggest story in the sport right now. Not the Rockets, although they are a big story. It's a story Adam Silver wishes wasn't on the docket, but it is. We've got we've got a potential 
gambling issue. And I don't really want to get into get what gambling and sports means and how can the NBA legislate it when they're so in bed with the gambling companies. That's stuff for another show. I want to ask, I'm going to ask Sean, would he be John T. Porter if he could? We'll talk about that when we come back. You're back inside the Veritex Community Bank Studios with Del Olalea. I mean, you're not actually in the studio, but if you watch ESPN Houston's YouTube channel, it's kind of like you are. No, not really? Okay. Welcome back to the show. I mentioned John Tay Porter before we went to break. If you don't know who John Tay Porter is, he is and maybe, maybe in a matter of days was a forward for the 
Toronto Raptors. He's kind of bounced around after entering the league in 2019. He is, he's played for the Grizzlies, and I say played, and I'm stretching it. He barely played, but he was on their roster from looks like 20 to 22, and then it w- and then wound up on the Bucks on a lot of Exhibit 10 minimum deals. Uh, so a lot of his money was was rarely ever guaranteed outside of when he initially signed his first deal. So I bring up the money because it's important. He before he became a Raptor. He, w- he had accrued just under $2.5 million, and that can go quick or go slow depending on your spending habits. When he joined the Raptors, he, did, he didn't have a guaranteed deal. He was a G Leaguer. He, he would play for the Raptors depending on how their injury report looked, and now with all the trades, he, he was going to get more time. They, they've decided to do a hard reset, so they're trying to look at younger players and see what they have. He's played 26 games for the Raptors this year, f- started five, played 11 games for the Grizzlies back in 2021. So certainly a bit NBA player, but still a guy who people value and will have on a roster in some way, shape, or form. He is being looked at by the NBA for multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months, according to ESPN. A couple of the games in question are one against the Clippers on January 26th, where there was increased betting interest on the under for Porter Props. On the night, they're set at five and a half points, four and a half rebounds, and one and a half assists. There also there also was an over under for three pointers. That evening, Porter played four minutes and left the game because of an aggravation to an eye injury he had suffered four days earlier against the Grizzlies. He had three rebounds and one assist and did not attempt a three. So he hit an under on all of those props. And then the next day, as part of a daily report, DraftKings Sportsbook stated that the under on Porter Street Pointers was the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player props from games that evening. So someone put a lot of money on a Porter under and won plenty of money. And then the next game, he played 19 minutes, scored 12.7 rebounds and three assists. So when he plays, he at least can go way over the, the props that were set for him for that Clipper game. So the NBA is investigating. There's another game that was very similar. And I guess the the bigger issue beyond the props, if we're trying to point the finger at Jonte Porter, he left the game under mysterious circumstances. An aggrav- he, an injury to his eye where he couldn't play very many minutes, but he was able to get in the game, so the prop was valid, and then he left, and the prop hit, the unders hit. So I asked Sean this. The, also, the other information for Jonte Porter, his brother is Michael Porter Jr., so if money was an issue for Jonte Porter, he could always look to Denver and go, my brother is making 30 plus million dollars this year and eventually he'll make over 40. So if money was an issue in the Jonte Porter household, he's got a really rich brother he can look to. I don't know the relationship, the dynamic. Some brothers hate each other. We saw that here in Houston. Our carrier was trying to steal the Texans right from under Cal. Didn't work out. Cal's the principal owner of the Texans, if you missed it. Voted unanimously by the owners. So brothers can be can be loving, and they can also be snakes. It happens. I don't know the John T. Porter deal with his older brother, Michael. But let's just say they have a reasonable relationship. What is John T. Porter doing throwing away maybe not a long-standing NFL, uh, NBA career, but he was going to get contracts. He's a player that people will probably continue to give these Exhibit 10 two-way deals because he's a big who can shoot. He could probably have hung on for the next five or six years. At a minimum, but he's put his career into question. I asked Sean, Sean, if you had a brother making Michael Porter Jr. money, let's just say Michael Mapes Jr. I don't know if you have a brother, but let's call him Michael Mapes Jr. And he he didn't produce for a a, a local station. Let's say he produced for, for Dan Patrick. So he's not making Michael Porter Jr. money, but let's give you a comp. Dan Patrick. Long, he's a, a long-standing producer in a good spot, making money. That shows on TV. Would you? I don't know. You wouldn't be able to put your career in question because who cares about gambling here? Do I bet unders on. Uh, but let's on just Armageddon references. Well, let's just say you could somehow put your career in question by betting. Would you? Would you? Would you pull a Jonte Porter when you know you've probably? I know it's it's weird to say here where you could pr- you think hey, I got five to six years here if I want it. 
I know that's weird here. I mean, that's I'm I'm stretching the realms of po- I'm stretching the realms of cre- credulity here. This is where it, where it, it breaks falls down. Apart. I understand, but I couldn't put you in the NBA. That that was even less Why realistic. You? Well, you're not in the NBA. How am I, how am I going to put you in the NBA? Well, you're giving me a brother, but you can't put me. Oh, in you're, the NBA. you don't have a brother. Fine, we'll, I we'll, do have a brother. We'll do but... the we'll do the NBA thing. Let's just say you're an NBA player. Thank you. I'll give you that credit. And you are a into the bench. But yeah. people find value in you. You're a good guy. People like having yeah. Sean Mays around. A shooter. Yeah. yeah, you're a stretch four, which people like. Oh wow! Look at that. I'm giving you yeah. props. Sam Hauser. Okay. Could you? <laughs> sure, Sam Hauser. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be Sam Hauser, you can be Sam Hauser. He has a brother. Uh, he does. <laughs> it's the dude from Yellowstone, Cole. It's, it's not him. It's a different brother altogether. Uh, would you? Pu- do you find any way you could put your career in jeopardy? Bet on the unders on your own props. No. <laughs> the funniest part about this is that he he's basically hanging on to an NBA career. Like, he's hanging on just on the edges of rosters. Sure. And the way that he chooses to make money is to not, you know, try to— Try to try to put up numbers. Yeah, try to, get try buckets. To, try to get buckets. Try to try to you know fill the stat sheet. Nope, he's he's like you know it's literally just the most short term thinking you could possibly have. It is remarkable. <laughs> is to be like you know how I'm gonna make money is by winning uh, player prop unders on myself bit by bit. <laughs> I'm going to pick and choose spots where I can. Pre- or the other game was a game against the. The Kings, where he played three minutes before exiting due to an illness and did not return. Once again, the unders hit, um, and he I guess if he bet on himself or told someone else to bet on him, money was made. If you're an NBA player, man, uh, before you get to the point where you are betting on unders on yourself, maybe work on your game. Maybe use this opportunity where the Raptors are going to give you minutes because they're not trying to win games. Or you maybe impress somebody and find your way into a guaranteed deal next year. Or go play in China. Like, or like that too. You're, you, you can definitely make more money. Go play in play, Europe. Playing in Europe or China than you can betting unders on your own props. As if that might not raise a red flag, particularly of the way you exit games. Well, that and, A, I mean, we've, we've already talked about how barely in the NBA he is that – a, that this much money is changing hands on unders. on him. Who even knows he exists? There, I I forgot I forgot what uh, what book it was, what sports book it was in the report. But it was th- DraftKings. DraftKings. There's like two nights where the number one money maker was Jonte Porter unders. Who was ever betting on Jonte Porter? Yes, yeah, so which anything. is like the reddest of red flags. Like, what the hell is going on right now? Why is so much coming in? Oh, so much money coming in on this guy? <laughs> on on a guy who you can also reasonably ask, why are you even putting up numbers for the end of the bit? Like, can I bet on Boban unders? Like, what? Yeah, I- exactly. <laughs> if he like, gets in the game, the Rockets are playing the Trailblazers. He didn't get in the game last night, but there's a yeah. reasonable chance he would get in the game. Can I bet on unders for Boban? Why is yeah, you're right. Why does Jonte Porter have unders yeah, can, props on him? Can I bet unders on Jonathan Williams? Like, <laughs> like what are we doing? And he's made it pretty obvious, and I don't know how he gets out of it. He doesn't. <laughs> well, Shohei's apparently is gonna get out of it. We'll see. Uh, does Jonte Porter have an interpreter that he can pin this on? Someone stole money from me. He'll blame it on he'll blame it on Siakam. Siakam, Siakam. <laughs> See, I stole money from me and then bet on me to not play. Oh, the, the problem for him is he can't explain in a reasonable fashion why he only played four and three minutes in a game. Why he decided because of random injuries that he he came back from really quickly, he couldn't finish the game. Yeah. An illness and an eye injury that only kept him out until the next game where he was just fine and put up numbers. Yeah. Where no, be, no bets were put on the unders on him, oddly enough. Huh. Not to the point where people would notice. Weird. Yeah, no, I, I have mean, yeah, this guy, this guy's not gonna be in the NBA. So you're not ever. a Jonte Porter type. You, you no. just decide I'm gonna put up numbers and make my way that way. No, uh, or mooch off your brother. Get, yes, <laughs> like, you- like, like, like that's the part that we're not talking about enough. Is that the fact that his brother has a max contract for the NBA champions? <laughs> you can find a way to f- to make a living, even if you have to go to Europe. And then your brother can subsidize you if it comes to that. And, and I would say, you know, maybe some people just, you know, they they don't want to um, – because his entire life he's kind of been just like 
Michael Porter's brother. The other one, yeah. Yeah, he's been the other one, you know. He doesn't want to stoop so low to just, like, give up on his NBA dream and just be, like, in his entourage or, you know, be, like, just his brother. He doesn't – he wouldn't stoop to those depths. He would stoop to different depths. Yeah, but he's betting on his own hunters in yeah. the NBA. Like, so, he's, so, he's not against, uh, you know, shameful ways to make money. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he is stepping on the floor in, a, in an NBA game. By the way, a great accomplishment. He's stepping on the <laughs> – I guess I know Michael Porter Jr. is a star of the NBA champions – Making an NBA roster is an accomplishment. Getting paid to play that game is a great accomplishment. And you're getting minutes. And he proved, at least in one game, once he tries, in 19 minutes, he scored 12 points, seven rebounds, and three assists. So there is a level of skill there. But instead, we're going to look for look for angles and not try and then beg off because of weird injuries and decide, you know what, I'm going to make my money that way. And again, like, what are the the, like, the maximums that you can bet on prayer, player props are not that high? I, yeah, according to a screenshot I saw, it was like he, someone put like 80K in one because all the unders hit one about $1.2 million. Yeah. Um, so money can be made, but John T. Porter, uh, if it proves to be true, which it looks like the evidence suggests he did – influence his own numbers and have big numbers put on him has ruined a chance to be a guy, the 14th guy on the bench for the next five, six years and, and make that money ra- relatively easily. Just be, you or, mentioned just being the 14th guy on the, on, on the bench. He could have theoretically gotten real NBA contracts. It's he, true. That, that, that has happened. I mean, wow. So, maybe it's just because you're wearing a heat hat but mm-hmm. how many guys from the Miami Heat just get plucked from obscurity and then turn into Hassan Whiteside yeah, or Caleb, yeah. Tyler Johnson and like all these guys Duncan get, Robinson Duncan Robinson Caleb Martin's next he was a two-way guy and he's his deal is up and the Heat may not sign him but he's gonna make money too so yeah, yeah there are ways like these guys like there there's guys that start off on minimum contracts or two-way contracts that get I'm not saying they turn into again Hassan Whiteside signed like a max contract Duncan Robinson but, signed a ninety million dollar deal. Yeah, you, you, it happens. You, you you can make Jonte. You can make tens of millions of dollars. Jonte, just beg to be on the Heat summer league squad. That, That's your path. Not betting on yourself to and well, it sounds like he's not really betting on himself. He's he's betting on a chance for people. I don't know what he's betting on. He's just betting the suck. I will I will say from the NBA's perspective, this is bad. This is, you it's know. awful. I know the however. Ga- However, you can't really say that like games are affected. Not by Dante Porter. <laughs> that results of games have been affected. I feel like every every couple, well, it's been back to back weeks, but for for a while, it's been every couple months. There's been like some sort of betting story, and every time it feels like the leagues are like narrowly missing out on like actual max match fixing, yeah. where it's like where it's uh, Calvin Ridley. He didn't play, but he bet. Uh, parlays involving the Falcons, but they're to win, so uh, you know you can dance around the, yeah. I- the implications. All, all the Detroit guys love gambling on college football, but they don't actually gamble on NFL football, so it's fine. But they still need to get suspended. Show you Otani. We don't know if he's betting against the Angels. Maybe or not. it's soccer. All, all of the bets. We'll, we'll see. This and then this one where you're like, wow, this is actually super bad except that it's the 14th guy on the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. So it, they they've not played a meaningful game all season. And he takes himself out of games before he can really affect them. It's not like he plays 25 minutes and just airballs everything and, and it, throws the ball turns the ball over all the time. And he's, it's and it's not like again he's Pascal Siakam or he's a guy who plays 30 minutes a night normally. It's like, well, he's just kind of an end of the bench guy. He's know? decided that the funny thing is he probably thinks of himself as too talented to to play 25 minutes and get all those unders, so I got to fake an injury to get out of here because if I actually do play, I'm going to score. And if, I guess if you look at the night— mess around and make some shots. Yeah, know? and I guess if you look at the 19 minutes he played in a game, he scored 12 points, so he maybe he's right. But Jonte Porter, I don't know if he'll be the face of, of gambling going forward, but he will be a name people remember, and the NBA will have to figure out how, how to get around this issue and they have to hope it's limited to this guy making an awful decision considering what we laid out where he would have been just fine hanging around. You're a 6'10 guy who can shoot a little bit. There are spots for you. And maybe you you would have become more than a guy who's going between the G League and minimum deals and two-way deals. But that appears to be over if all the evidence is correct. He's He's done. 
team. I don't he 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 won't be an NBA player anymore. And the problem for him is I don't know if he'll be a guy who can be accepted anywhere. China, Europe, he may just be done. And maybe he is now part of the Michael Porter Jr. entourage because where else can he go? And maybe that was his plan all along. My brother's gotten paid. I'll just I'll just be a guy who gets his laundry and his lunches. I'll be his personal Uber Eats. Uh, again, he's willing to stoop <laughs> to levels to make money, but for some reason, he thought of throwing not games, but throwing prop bets, basically, to <laughs> to make a little bit of. Maybe extra he money. thought he was so inconsequential, no one would notice. The problem is you're so inconse- you're so inconsequential. The money was so big that people did notice. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. Th- that's the thing. Yeah. So unfortunately for Jonte Porter, it appears his NBA career is flatlining. But hey, he brought it upon himself. And credit to Sean Mates for not wanting to be a Jonte Porter. Sean would try to go out and get buckets. I mean, you know it. I mean, I'm playing the Trailblazers. I can get buckets against the Trailblazers, Come right? On. Yeah. Even if got, my num- even if my numbers in the 70s. I got Ryan Rupert on me. <laughs> Throw a it's, Rupert. Jabs. it's Rupert until he <laughs> proves a, himself. I'm not calling him Rupert. Throw a couple of jab steps. You know, get fouled. Get, get sure. past him. Get to the line. Yeah, you, have uh, Duop Wreath uh, foul me. You can get to, make your free throws. You beat that prop. You, you'll beat the Sean Mace props, the unders on that. You'll go over. There's enough garbage time to go around when you're playing teams like the Trailblazers. We're, late. We're way late for a break. We'll get to some D'Amico Ryan sound when we come back. He was asked about a couple of acquisitions – the Texans made it in the first week of free agency, the Daniel Hunter signing, and also the trade and extension of Joe Mixon. We'll hear D'Amico's thoughts on that as he was at the owners' meeting. And the news that comes out of that for, for your Houston Texans, Cal McNair. He is the primary owner for the Texans. That was official. The vote was unanimous. So welcome to the welcome to the club, Cal. As if you are already as if you already weren't in it. But now it's official. We'll be back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. We'll hear from D'Amico coming up here shor- shortly. The Texans did make another signing, another another DB, Miles Bryant, former Patriot. The Texans signed, so he'll be another guy you throw into the DB room. Cornerback, been around a bit. I'm sure Casario has some knowledge of him. It's another guy you see if he can compete and if he can win a job, and if not, simply make the room stronger. I don't. It's just kind of what they've done this offseason as far as the cornerback position is concerned. Throw bodies at it, not make a real signing that would would elevate the room as far as putting a real starter on the other side of Stingley. It's just it's just a guy who's played a lot of football and and maybe will be someone who can contribute or doesn't make the 53. Okuda's different. They paid him enough money where he will likely be on the 53 and Henderson probably too. Miles Bryant is someone who will have to compete and prove himself over younger guys who they bring in as well. So they do make a signing, uh, bring in another corner. Don't know how how much it'll mean once practice begins. But a couple thing, a couple guys who were brought in who will play, who who will be a major part of the 2024 season are Daniil Hunter and Joe Mixon. Daniil Hunter, you won't call him replacement for. Grenard, probably just an improvement. Uh, Grenard had a nice year last year, but Daniil Hunter has been a legitimate pass rusher over several seasons. Comes from the Vikings. The Texans give him a short but lucrative deal. Here is D'Amico talking about the acquisition of Daniil Hunter. Yeah, Daniil's definitely a, a big guy. <laughs> a big guy, but he has the length. I think that's what sets you apart as a, as a pass rusher. <clears throat> Daniil's length and his ability to consistently – you know, get after the quarterback. Uh, he's had double-digit sacks multiple times in his career, and we're looking for him to add constant pressure on the quarterback. I know Daniil is excited to be back home in Houston. We're excited to have him here in Houston because, you know, not too many times, not often, you get to play in front of your family, uh, your high your, your old high school. Like, a lot of people will be rooting for Daniil, so we're happy to have a Daniil Hunter's 27 sacks over the last two seasons. So you heard D'Amico talk about his pr- productivity. That is certainly the case. They got a big time pass rusher on the short deal. He's 29 years old, so that's probably the way to go about it. Don't give guys of that age who will be 30, who will turn 30 early in the season, big, well, big money you can do, but not long term. And we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but the Texans upgraded the pass rush position. We know some of the. Maybe the positions where they still need to bolster. They're throwing bodies at corner. It may be that same scenario at defensive tackle. We'll see what plays out in the draft if they go attack that position with one of their two second-round picks to find a guy who can help them right away. We were asking questions about the running back position. Once Saquon Barkley came off the board, and we saw Devin Singletary go to the Giants, and Derek, Derek Henry didn't seem like an option. So what were the Texans going to do? They make a trade for a guy. If we were judging his past, you wouldn't suspect the Texans would make the trade. Joe Mixon. Now, it happened a long time ago, uh, but he has had some off-the-field stuff recently that, at least if we are judging the Texans by their by their 20-plus years of doing business, he wasn't a the guy they would acquire. But they did acquire him. They traded for Joe Mixon. didn't cost him very much as far as compensation. And not, not only did they trade for him, they also gave him a, an extension. This is D'Amico on the acquisition of Joe Mixon and the extension that followed. Yeah, same there. I mean, adding a great player to our team and mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, we knew we had to fix the contract, mm-hmm. and that was the same situation there in uh, Cincinnati. So uh, when you add a, a great player to your team, uh, I think he's deserved what he's gotten. And that's all the guys that contracts, they deserve what they've gotten. They've shown it on film, and that's the result of him being a consistent player in this league. There you go. D'Amico Ryan's at the owners' meeting discussing the owners' meetings discussing their biggest acquisitions. Daniel Hunter, Joe Mixon, and you know, Al Jazeer, Al Shair, excuse me, is a linebacker. Uh, there were questions about him too. D'Amico kind of did the rounds, answering questions, and 
a lot of a lot of attention paid to the Texans. In fact, I saw something today where I think one of the McCourty brothers, I'm never really sure which one it is. Is Devin on NFL Network or is it Jason? Uh, what, like, Jason. Is, you guess, he's guessing, by the way. He doesn't know. <laughs> one of the, whoever has had a long standing setup on NFL Network, that McCourty brother was discussing the Texans and he, he named them one of their one of one of the teams to look for. They're going to be that team and it kind of bears out. They're going to open up the season, at least the preseason. They're going to be the team that faces the Bears in Canton for the Hall of Fame game. Now, they play the Bears in a regular season, too. Um, it was pointed out on the John and Lance show. That's a, that usually doesn't happen. They usually don't have a team play in that game, and then you see, them in the pre you see them in the regular season as well. I guess we'll see Caleb Williams in that one. CJ Stroud's not going to play in the first game. I don't know how many Texans players who we care about will play. Maybe we'll see the rookies in that one, but it just speaks to the level of attention the Texans are getting. And the win totals are out too. We'll get to that on the other side. We're, we're, we are way late for a break, but as the, as the NFL news keeps coming, the latest news, at least in my email, is about who they think are going to win a lot of games and who they think aren't going to win very many. So the Texans, you can kind of guess where they are. You consider the hype, what happened last year. The Texans you can look to as a team who will have the biggest jump when it comes to 2023 win total and 2024 win total. And before we do that, and speaking of that, if you want to bet on Texans over-unders, and because you're not Jonte Porter, it won't affect you negatively, you can go to mybookie.ag to get that done. Now, it is March Madness, so certainly my bookie is going to take care of you if you want to bet on the NCAA tournament. You had the women's second-round wrap-up last night. Hopefully you did well. Maybe you had a prop on... Juju Watkins and her over. Could have done that. Could have done the Caitlin Clark thing, too. She struggled early, but got, got it going late as Iowa found a way to win. If you are interested in that, go to mybookie.ag. You can take your experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put 200 in. You can get 300 ready to play instantly using promo code BET975. And the fun, of course, does not stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to or what to put your money on. The best part about MyBookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Remember, go to MyBookie.ag for that. Use promo code BET975 to secure your welcome bonus today, only with MyBookie.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. Welcome back to the final segment of the show. Coming up after us are Gallant and George, followed by the Killer Beast here on 92.5 and 97.5. I talked about the win totals before I went to break, and the Texans are at plus four, the biggest jump overall. Atlanta behind them at plus three, I guess the Kirk Cousins effect, mostly probably because it isn't Desmond Ritter. I mean, Kirk Cousins says we can get off all our jokes, but he's not Desmond Ritter. So the Atlanta, who, who at least played competitive football and was missing a competent quarterback, has one now, so they jump up to plus three. Baltimore is a plus three, two. How many games did Baltimore win last year? How, how many do they expect them to win if they're a plus three? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Is it plus, plus three, three? Sorry. You're right. I'm last I'm year's getting ahead of, hope. I'm thinking about what they actually won as opposed to what they were projected yeah. to win. Yes. It is plus three from their projected total from last year. I was thinking that with the Texans too. I was like, what? They have 14 games because they won 10 last yeah. year. Yeah. So. Let me, let me, let me, uh, a lot of you guys probably knew that. I'm, I'm uh, getting my head of my getting ahead of myself probably because it's at the end of a work day. But plus three for Atlanta, plus three for Baltimore, and plus three for Green Bay. The biggest drops, Carolina, minus three. I guess people really thought much a lot of Bryce Young going in. Clearly, that went poorly. Minus three for Denver, they have a quarterback question, and then minus three for New England, where they have no answers at quarterback, and that'll probably come through the draft. So. Texans, a lot of expectations their way, and well-deserved. They did enough to spark spark people's interest. They are the team of the moment. Hopefully, hopefully they live up to it, and the schedule will be one where they'll get challenged. The quarterback play will be much improved. Of course, injuries can happen and can turn the tide uh, of that schedule, but you got the likes of even in your home games, Josh Allen's coming to town. You've got Tua coming to town, among others. That's just out of the AFC East, so... It's a little different than seeing Baker Mayfield actually played pretty well last year and seeing Kenny Pickett. Baker kept his job. We all know what happened to Kenny Pickett. They went and got two guys and then traded him. So the Texans are in a good spot. People believe in them. They just have to reward that belief with winning football, and there's no reason to believe it won't happen. We'll just have to see it play out on the field. Uh, I was talking about what we've talked about a couple of NFL rules. One that we we didn't revisit today was the hip drop tackle. There's some kind of back and forth between what it actually will be because some people are saying something is a hip drop tackle. Some others are saying it isn't. I think the one that we can focus on, if you remember the Tony Pollard play from, from the – from the postseason a couple seasons ago or what happened to Mark Andrews last year where where a defender is really his two feet leave the floor or excuse me the grass or the field or the astral turf field turf whatever and he drops all of his weight down on 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 the back of the legs of a of an opponent Uh, that I guess they're calling a swivel hip tackle that's the one they want to outlaw so I don't know what they're going to call the hip drop that's they deem legal. That is probably a reason some people are upset by it because it puts the referees in a position where they have to judge what is and what isn't a hip drop tackle, or at least what is a legal one and what isn't. But Kenyon, Kenyon Drake, who is a running back, and so he's going to have a definite opinion on it, is all for it. He applauds the change. He says he doesn't care about the popular opinion. He lost a lot of time in his career to the tackle. In fact, he quote tweeted, an injury that happened to him when the news came down and said the league finally got it right. Hip drop tackles have been detrimental to the health of runners, including myself, and I, for one, appreciate the decision to make it a priority for the safety of ball carriers. So he's a guy who has a a vested interest in it. He's a ball carrier, and the injury happened to him, where a guy, the quote, he quote tweeted the video, he is approaching two defenders, and there's a and there's one coming up on him from behind, grabs his waist. It's probably the prototypical thing they want to get out of the game. Guy picks his feet off the floor. The defender does. Drops his weight down, and Kenyon Drake loses his, an- loses his ankle, as he puts it. So, you're going to have differing opinions on this. We know defenders, 
Emmanuel Acho, who doesn't play anymore. We've got J.J. Watt, who doesn't play anymore. Both came out against it. Javon Hall in the safety said, uh, said, I guess we don't tackle anymore. So you're going to have this back and forth. But I got to say, I, I, I agree with the, the offensive players in this regard because I don't think it's much different from a horse collar. And I bet defenders are happy the chop block is out of the game where you can't be engaged with the defender and then have another guy come low. I mean, that was part of football at 1.2. But I think I might have said yesterday, it's probably a lot to do with the, the preponderance of things going against them, and they take issue with it. But this one, I can't find sympathy for them. I get some of the offensive rules in place that, that help offenses perform while puts defenses in a bind. If we're talking about player safety and this particular tackle, it's a, I don't think anyone looks at that tackle even when it doesn't result in a a catastrophic injury and go, ooh, that looked good. It it always looks like a dangerous play. It always looks like the the ball carrier is ball carrier is an inch away from suffering something very serious. It just looks awful. I do wonder. You mentioned the preponderance of rules going towards the offense and away from the uh, defense. I do wonder if there will be a time where where uh real real football man football comes comes back like w- is there ever a time where rules start getting changed in favor of the defense instead of as far as physicality is concerned yes i'm trying to think of what what they could do that wouldn't fly in the face of their 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 safety concern that particular thing they want to push what could they do to yeah. to alleviate some of the defenders or even, concerns even just like the uh Illegal contact, you know, some of the pass interference stuff. Uh, I mean, I guess it would have to come, but like with the safety stuff, it would have to come with, um, what's it called? Advancements in like safe, like actual equipment. And like if if they could actually make a helmet or pads that like actually keep you uh, healthier, then you can just go back and play NFL Blitz uh, <laughs> style football. <laughs> I I don't know what technology is going to come our way to okay, make that happen. Okay, maybe not NFL again. blitz. Yeah, you know, if, but yeah. Can I've, we at least get jacked up back on uh, on oh, in, no, NFL countdown? The NFL is never allowing that segment to come back. It is funny that that was you a just thing. Got jacked up? Nah, you gotta go. Nah, you just get moss. No one's getting jacked up yeah, anymore. That's no. not a segment anymore. No. I don't know. Not, Be- not the America I was I was raised. <laughs> what happened to the the game you love, Sean? What happened to it? I don't know how you protect an ankle with pads. Or a low, yeah, or a lower that, foot injury. That that's there is or a just, lower leg injury. Excuse me. There is just stuff like this where there actually is no. It there, was more of a broader. You yeah. Know. W- whether you could like what rule change is is going to happen the next like ten years? Maybe if where you, JJ Watt's going to be like love this. Maybe you bring the great gazoo helmets that some guys were in practice, like college teams were in practice, and all right, now you can target people. The West Welker. Now uh, you can hit people. Oh, oh, you mean like the beehive? Yeah, thing. yeah, where there's it feels there's like an extra padding there, but it's still in the color of the team helmet. We're okay. Headshots are back in. You want to target a guy's head? We've got a we've got this great gazoo thing that's going to protect their head. Dante Whitner, come on back. Yeah, Laron Le- Landry, come on back. Well, uh, <laughs> Brandon I, Merriweather, come I think on back. Laron Landry's issue would be. The, the synthetics that he takes more than well, anything else. The alleged synthetics that he takes. I was just thinking of of guys that could definitely not play in today's league. Yeah, guys who would not survive. The enforcer thing is out the window for the most part. That'll wrap up the show. I know. It's a big day in the NFL. We've got the kickoff change. We've got Cal as the principal owner of, of your Houston Texans. And defenders are going to play flag football going forward. At least that's what they're trying to tell us. Sure. Okay. We're done. Gallant and George are up next, followed by the Killer Bees. I'll talk to you tomorrow.
The wait is almost over. Opening day is almost here. I'm ready for baseball. The Astros are officially the third worst team in the state of Texas because the Rangers have won the World Series and the Space Cowboys are one and over as the Astros in 2023. Well, how can you be excited for baseball if that's the first epic thing you're going to bring up, you Debbie Downer? I'm so excited. I'm ready for real you're baseball. You're not excited. You're like, oh, oh I'm oh. so over spring training baseball. Well, I mean, the trick to spring training baseball is you, you don't watch it. That's a good point. I mean, it's not, like I it's, all, it's not even all televised. You're ready for Sugarland Space Cowboy Space. I that's am. what you're I, talking. About. I'm ready. Friday the best night. Best team in the city. Friday night. Can't wait. ESPN 92.5. You're some, home for Space Cowboys. Some people got mad at you, Joe, yesterday on the Twitch because you, they can't use their ears. Well, I mean, listen, I don't use my ears often either, so I'm just going to pretend that the Twitch was right. They said that you claimed that the Astros pitching staff it is not the Sugarland Space Cowboys uh, pitching staff now. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously said tongue in cheek, given that all the Astros pitchers are injured and you're expecting to see them in Sugarland more recently or more soon than you're expecting to see them for the Astros. But you actually might be correct based off of uh, one day where the Astros back at home at Minute Maid Park, a place where they've been known to not hit at all, lost to a minor league baseball team. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know who's playing for either team. All, all I know, I know is-, is I saw Chandler Rome's tweet is that the starting pitcher for the Space Cowboys wasn't allowed into the stadium. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know who he was. Right. They didn't. And Chandler <laughs> and they was trying didn't to throw him a bone. Chandler tried to throw him a bone, and this poor bleeper still couldn't get in because they didn't believe him. That's so sad. I feel so bad for that guy. What an awful way. But uh, the Houston Chronicle, uh, Greg Rajon did this story where he interviewed the, the three big pieces from Sunday Night Baseball and, and for their coverage this year on, on television. And it kind of raises this question for us as well about how do you view the Astros this year versus past years? I, I still feel very positive about this team. The injuries suck, of course, but this still should be a very, very good team this year. And based on the betting odds and how we all feel, I would imagine – we all think they're going back to the World Series or at minimum the ALCS for an eighth straight time. You know why I feel good about them? It's not just because I'm a massive homer who likes to pander. I feel best about the Astros right now because I have a hard time buying into the idea that as many things that went wrong last year are going to go wrong again. Now, maybe I should knock on wood before I say that given there are so many injuries that the Astros pitching staff is currently dealing with. Mm-hmm. But are you expecting Framber Valdez to be a disappointment? Christian Javier to be a disappointment? Jose Abreu to take seven months to get going? Jeremy Pena to not have the same kind of power numbers that he um, had a couple of years ago in the playoffs? Okay, maybe that was a little bit too much to expect. But are you expecting him to be better than last year? There's a lot of things that happened last year in addition to Altuve missing a ton of time. Jordan Alvarez missing a ton of time, which maybe happens again. There's a lot of extenuating circumstances that I think happened last year that do make me believe that this year they will have a better winning, uh, uh, better win total than they did last year. Yeah, if you take away their the the injured list out of it right now, there's nothing but positive things to view this team as. I, I know Martin Maldonado is gone, and, and maybe that does affect Framber Valdez in, in a way that would really disappoint all of us, but. They're going to be better with Yiner Diaz behind the plate simply because you're replacing the a defensive worst mastermind. hitter. In, he's not. A defensive mastermind. I mean, this is the biggest question, Joe, about the Astros this year. Yeah, Yiner Diaz will have a better chance to throw batters out at second base when they try to steal a base uh, than Martin Maldonado. That's probably true. And he's going to hit a lot better. Also probably true. Even if he never stops swinging at sliders five feet out of the zone, he's going to be better than Martin Maldonado. But it's not about just the bat. And the arm Mm -hmm. and the glove. It's about the mind. Yeah. It's about the therapist. And Maldonado is maybe, in in some countries, a licensed uh, psychologist given Hmm. just the way that he manages pitchers. Although, Fran Bravaldo sucked last year, and so did Christian Javier, and so did Rafael Montero. Yeah. I mean, those, but those, you know, Martin Maldonado. Speaking of win totals, we feel pretty good. The the, Sean, Brian, and myself, we, uh, we went on the Astros. Over on the win total when we were at LaBerge this weekend. What's the win total? Uh, it was 92, 92 and, a, and a half. Yeah, 92 and oh, a half. That's it? 92 yeah. and a half? Yeah. And we, um, we also got a little piece of them to win the uh, American, American League. League. 
Hmm. Plus 400. Well, if you can't drive all the way out there. Guess what? You can go to mybookie.ag, Fact. promo code BET975. You also can do that. Hit the over on that bad boy as well. So, yeah, I feel I feel good about the Astros this year. Uh, reading the story and the interview from Carl Ravitch and, and Eduardo Perez and, and some of the stuff they pointed out, I, I thought Dave Cohn's point about Yiner Diaz was, was, was just interesting because he just points out the obvious, though. It's still interesting that you have this guy who's going to hit – 30 home runs for you. And and I keep forgetting like how little production you got from Martin Maldonado. But when you really look at the numbers, yes, he has some big moments, some fun moments in the season last year, last couple years, but adding Yiner to this lineup. And like you mentioned, the hope that Pena will take that next step 